I must do this. And it's for the person who means the most to me. My life is nothing compared to his. Doing this is easy if it's for him. Thank you, everyone. I know it didn't last very long, but really, this was the best time I've ever had in my life. If I blow him a kiss, I wonder, will it reach him up there? No, I guess it won't. The rippling surface of flowing water transforms the soft light of the morning sun. The beams combine, becoming a spotlight that paints the stage. The flowers awaiting the curtain's rise display faces of bright red and brilliant yellow. They turn their ears to listen to the performance that is about to begin. Accompanied by the gentle rhythm of a babbling brook, the birds begin to sing. Meanwhile, a mischievous sea breeze causes a rustling amidst the leaves of the trees, disrupting the concert. It is a familiar scene, one that has unfolded every morning since the beginning of time. And even now, the daily overture continues, its delicate, perfect balance never faltering, never changing. In the midst of this joyous orchestration, at the center of the morning's discordant musical performance, lies a small village nestled deep in the wood. The name of the village is Tenuto. It sits atop a hill which overlooks the coastline. In fact, the town is only about four miles from the sea. Tenuto is very lucky in this regard, for the town enjoys a wonderful cool breeze and a view that is nothing short of amazing. Then there are the flowers. They seem to blossom almost everywhere in the town. They paint the landscape with color as far as the eye can see. And they are the reason Tenuto is also known by another name, the Village of Flowers. There is a harbor town at the foot of a hill that can be seen from Tenuto. When night falls, the lights from the town shine like diamonds and open the hearts of those who gaze upon their illustrious splendor. Under normal circumstances, one might expect to find a bustling shopping district for tourists in a village as beautiful as this one. However, no such shops are to be found, not here. In fact, the village is quite calm, almost strangely quiet. 
It is a place that exudes a peaceful tranquility, a tranquility that further increases its allure, as well as its mystery. because of the moon. Because of the moon? That's right. The moon charms the water in the ocean with its beauty. And because the moon is so beautiful, the seawater just can't sit still. Is that true? Really? Really? Don't you feel your heart start fluttering inside of you when you look at the moon? I do! What about the puddle? Will it make waves when the moon comes out too? No, dear. There's not enough water. You need lots and lots of water, like the ocean, before it can make any real waves. Oh, I see. But that's weird. Why can't a little bit of water make waves too? The amount of water is the most important part of creating waves. That can be said about people as well. There are many things in this world that can charm people's hearts, just like the moon charms the sea. Things like wealth, vanity, status, image, and power. People who are drawn to these things create waves and the fear in their hearts makes the waves grow bigger and stronger. The more people there are, the bigger the waves can become. And as the number of people grows, the waves grow bigger and bigger. And that can lead to terrible conflicts. This is probably too hard for you to understand. I guess. But if something like that ever were to happen during your life, your only choice might be to jump into that sea. Because when you do, those big waves will calm down. It may be difficult at times, but if you try your best, you'll bring joy to the person who means the most to you. Really? Yes, though it's insulting to compare seawater stirred by the beauty of the moon to the ugly waves of human desire. <sighs> He seems to have calmed down, hasn't he, Doctor? He doesn't look like he's in pain the way he did before. It seems as though he must be having a pleasant dream. Yes. Well, that would be nice. It would be even better if that means he's headed towards recovery. A full recovery. It's said that people can have the most peaceful dreams just before they pass on. What are you talking about? How can you say that? I apologize. Hopefully, it's just an old wives' tale. Frederick.
guess I took longer than usual. Mom's probably worried about me. I'd better get home before it gets dark. live in the forest around here aren't really very strong, so I should be able to defeat them without too much trouble. But just to be safe, I'll go over the basics of how to fight again. Let's see. The turn order goes from fastest to slowest, right? It looks like it's my turn now. I should try moving around a bit to start with. Until this action gauge runs out of time, I can move around to anywhere I want. The action gauge only decreases when I'm actually doing something, so if I don't know what to do next, I can stop and think about it without losing my turn. Moving around isn't the only thing I can do, I can attack enemies too. This time, I think I'm gonna try using the attack button. I've got it! I'm starting to remember how to do this more and more! There's also one other thing about the action gauge. Every time one of my attacks hits an enemy, the action gauge goes up a little. Which means that the more I attack my enemies, the more extra time I'll get to keep on moving and fighting. Alright, I think maybe it's time to try attacking. Looks like all the time in the action gauge has run out already. I guess that means my turn is over. I guess I'll just have to wait until it becomes my turn again. Oh, that's right! I almost forgot about that! When the next arrow appears overhead like this, it means that my turn will be coming up next. That way I have time to prepare, and I won't be surprised by it suddenly becoming my turn. Okay, it's my turn again. I feel sorry for this little guy, but I guess I'd better finish him off. Oh! Look out! By pressing the block button when an enemy attack is going to hit me, I can defend myself. But I have to get the timing just right, so I really need to concentrate. And if I want to run away, I just have to press and hold down LB and RB at the same time when it's my turn. But I need to hold down the buttons during my entire turn, so I have to watch for the next arrow. That way I can start holding down LB and RB before my turn even starts, or else I might not be able to get away. I think that pretty much covers all the basics of fighting. Okay, I'm almost done. I just have to keep at it.
I'm so tired. There are so many people living in Retardando. Why won't any of them buy from me? And now... I see. I guess you don't want to be touched by me either. Come and buy some of Tenuto's famous floral powder. It works very well. Please give it a try. Floral powder? Hmm. I didn't know people still made that. What with the mineral powder we can get these days? Why would anyone need that stuff? Now, I don't mean to be rude, honey, but floral powder just isn't useful anymore. Hmm. I guess no one around here wants to buy it. Ow! Hey, what was that for? What's your problem? Uh, but I didn't do anything! Who do you think you're talking to? I, I huh? didn't... Uh, 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 uh. Are you all right? From me, D -d don't touch me. Wow, did you see that, Mom? She was glowing. Come back here right now. Never go near anyone that glows like that girl did. Do you understand me? But why? Because I said so, that's why. Now, come on.
I'm home. Welcome back, Polka. Oh, you must be exhausted. I've made some nice hot stew. Mom, do you... Are you afraid to touch me? You used your magic in Retardando, didn't you? Why does everyone avoid me? Because they think they'll get sick if they touch you, even though it's not true. I'm living proof that it isn't true. After all, I live with you and I'm fine. I'm not afraid of dying from the illness, Mom. It's just, well, I'm just sad that no matter what I do, I can't make any friends. Polka. Beat! Run! Hold on, Reno! Wait for me! Hey, you! Where are you going with my bread? It's those brats again. Maybe I should poison the dough next time. Oh boy, that was a close one, Reto. Nah, that was easy. Easy? Jeez, if that's what you call easy, I'd hate to see hard. <laughs> Don't worry. Come on, let's deliver the bread. I'm sure everybody's getting hungry. Yeah, okay. But I don't like the rats down there. Come on, what do you expect? I mean, they live in the sewers. There's bound to be a rat or two. And plus, we're carrying fresh baked bread. You don't have to be a rat to want a bite of this. Well, what do we do if we get attacked? Don't let a few rats get you all freaked out. Hey, I took care of them the last time, didn't I? Yeah, I guess. Besides, the people lucky enough to live in houses aren't the ones who need us to take bread to them.
Come on, Beat. Let's take care of these guys. Reto, can you tell me what it is we have to do to fight again? What? Wait a minute. I thought I taught you all that. Did you forget already? Uh, well... Okay, fine. But I'm not explaining the basics again. First off, how to use items. You press LB and RB to rotate through items you've got equipped until you get to the one that you want to use. Then you just have to press the item button. That isn't too hard, is it? No, I get it, Riddle. Next, I'll show you how to use special attacks. There really isn't much to it. All you have to do is press the special attack button. And you can't use them up or anything, so you can use them as often as you want. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how it's done, so pay attention, okay? Sun Slash! Just move in close to the enemy and use your special attack. You'll finish him off in no time with an attack like that. You understood all that, right? Yeah, sure. To use your special attack, you just have to press the special attack button, right? Okay, one last thing. Listen close, because I'm going to teach you something super important about special attacks. Make sure you remember this. Now take a good look at what you see around us, Beat. Even though we're inside a sewer, there are some places that are light and some places that are dark, right? You see, the thing with special attacks is, depending on whether the place where you're standing is in the light or in the dark, the special attack you can use will change. What? I don't get it. What do you mean? If you're standing in the sunlight or some other bright place, you'll use a light special attack. But if you're standing someplace that's dark, like in the shade, then you'll use a dark special attack. Okay, that's all I'm gonna tell you for right now. Come on, let's go, Beat. What did you think?
Careful, Beat. They're after the bread. We've got people waiting for this, and we don't have enough to give any of it to you!
dare you! Don't eat it all at once. Hey, Reddo, why is bread so expensive anyway? If it was a little cheaper, we wouldn't have to steal it for people. Do you think the baker lady is just being greedy? Well, you know, Beat, it's not actually the baker lady's fault. Huh? What do you mean? The reason the bread is so expensive is the high taxes on it. It's not just bread, either. In Retardando, just about everything you need for everyday life has high taxes on it. That's why there's a lot of kids out there who can't get a decent meal to eat these days. And that's why they need us to help them, right? Yeah, the only thing that's not taxed is mineral powder. Oh, I see. So that's why anybody can get it, because it's so cheap. I guess the Count of Forte isn't really that bad after all. I mean, at least he keeps the tax on medicine cheap. Besides, you and I have the bread problem pretty much taken care of. Hey, don't get cocky. Be careful what you say, Beat. Come on, let's hurry up and drop off the rest. Then it's time for us to eat. Polka, dear, what's wrong? You've been sitting in your room all day. Oh, what am I going to do with you? I guess what happened is still bothering her. Poor thing. I should just stop her from going to Retardando. Whenever she goes there, she ends up getting hurt. Polka, help me pick some flowers later, okay? Hey, 
Ricardo, did you notice that magician girl from yesterday wasn't around today? Yeah, you're right. Hmm, I guess I should have taken a picture of her. Are you still messing around with that stuff? You need to look at things with your own two eyes. You'd see things a whole lot clearer if you didn't look at them through bent glass. That's not what photography's about at all, Reddo. And another thing, it isn't called bent glass, it's called a lens. Still, you have to feel sorry for that girl. I guess she won't be around for much longer. What? She won't? What are you talking about? Don't you know anything? That girl was able to use magic. And that means she must be sick with some kind of incurable illness. That's how it works. Basically, magic is a side effect of her disease. And it's always fatal? That's right, yeah. Only people who are gonna die soon are able to use magic like that. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I guess being able to use magic isn't that great after all. No, it's not. You can't use magic powers unless you're really sick. This world's pretty messed up. I get it. That's why no one in town wanted to get near her yesterday. They didn't want to catch her illness, too. Yeah, that's right. But the disease isn't actually contagious. That's just a rumor somebody started. A rumor? Yeah, it's weird. Most of the time, people don't really trust each other. But when it comes to something that they think might hurt them, they'll believe just about anything they hear. And they'll ignore almost anything else that doesn't help them directly. As long as they have food on their table, they don't care if other people out there are starving. And that's why we still bred to bring them, right? Okay, Beat. We leave first thing in the morning. What?
excited about tomorrow to fall asleep. And besides, it's way too early to go to bed anyway. Oh well, I guess I'll go out and look at the stars or something. see many stars out in the sky tonight. I guess all the bright lights from the city make it hard to see them. Olga, there you are. I was wondering where you went when I didn't see you in your room. Retardando certainly is beautiful at night. Do you think so? Somehow, when I think back on it, I get the feeling it was much more beautiful when I was a little girl. Yes, well, things always seem nicer in our memories. It's still just as beautiful. You'll have bad dreams if you stay up too late. Come on, let's get some sleep. Is Retardando really the same as it's always been? Really? No, it's not. This place used to be much more beautiful. You have a heart that sees the world with open eyes, don't you? Who... who are you? And what are you doing out here this late at night? Everything in the world slowly fades with time. It is very difficult to remain still and keep things exactly as they are in just one particular moment. But because everything shifts only a little bit at a time, no one really notices the change. The things that Frederick is seeing, is it all really just a dream? The difference between dreams and reality may very well just be relative. Oh, and what makes you say that? Well, I don't know. I guess it just came into my mind when I was watching Frederick's face while he was sleeping. Hmm, that may be more true than we know. Perhaps what Mr. Chopin is experiencing is not a dream. Only the individual can determine what is a dream and what is reality. Just because his eyes are closed, that does not necessarily mean he is dreaming. However, if he comes to think that the world he's in on the other side is the true reality, then... Then, it's possible he may never return to our reality. Hmm. Wow! 
So you can use magic powers too, Frederick? Oh, but then that must mean you're like me. And that you're gonna die soon too. Yes, you're right. I'm afraid that may very well be true. So, what kind of magic can you use? Well, essentially any and all kinds of magic. After all, this whole world is in my dream. <laughs> You're a strange man, Frederick. No, it's true. Everything around us is all a part of my dream. Even you are just a product of my imagination. Hmm. Okay then. If what you say is true, can you tell what I'm thinking about right now? If we really are inside your dream, then reading my mind should be easy for you. Of course it is. You were thinking that you don't want to use your magical abilities in front of other people anymore. Am I correct? I don't blame you for feeling that way. No one likes to be hurt. Frederick, there's something I'd really like to show you, but it's in the forest. Would you come with me? Huh? You want me to go with you to the forest? You mean right now? Yes, because it can only be seen at night.
Suave! Sacred signature. I'm sorry. <laughs> You foolish creatures! Orange glow! Orange glow! Perfect! Pew Grave! Now you will rest.
It's a frame of mind, you see. Signature. Pitiful, you soulless creatures. Sacred signature. Not be ashamed. I did it. How pitiful, you soulless creatures. Now you will rest. Much better. How pitiful, you soulless creatures. You grave. Now you will rest. Orange glow. Perfect. There is no way for you to stop my relentless advance.
this battle. Creatures. Pew Grave. Now you will rest. Shake Comet. I'm sorry. You foolish creatures! Pew Grave! Now you will rest. There is no way for you to stop my relentless advance. How pitiful, you soulless creatures! Pew Grave! Now you will rest. There is no way for you to stop my relentless advance. Good. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Now you will rest. Good.
now you will rest. Signature! Sacred signature! Sacred signature! Shake Comet! Shake Comet! I'm sorry. You Taya! You Rave! Now you will rest. Now you will rest. Orange glow. Orange glow. Orange glow. Perfect. Ha! Ta in. Ta ya. You grave. Now you will rest. Shake comet. I guess it's kind of dangerous out here when it's late at night. The animals in the forest never used to be this aggressive before. By the way, the question you asked me earlier, you never told me if I answered it correctly. Hmm? Of course, this is all a story I've created in my head. So, there's no way I could possibly be wrong. It's almost time. Hurry, Frederick. Wait. These flowers are what I wanted to show you. Flowers? Look at them. They're blossoming.
What... what are they? They're called Heaven's Mirror. They're like a reflection of the starry sky on the meadows. This is the only place they bloom in the forest. These flowers never bloom during the day, only at night. When the sun is up, they stay in their buds, but they're able to absorb sunlight with their leaves. And after night falls, they let out all the light they've stored when they blossom. It always happens at exactly two o'clock in the morning. They're beautiful. Absolutely stunning. It truly is a wondrous sight. But they're also called death lights. Death lights? The sun brings life, but the dark brings death. And these flowers bloom in darkness. So, darkness is evil, light is good. Whether you want to call them Heaven's Mirror or Death Lights, that's up to you, Frederick. But I guess, these days, pretty much everyone has taken to calling them Death Lights. Long ago, it was thought they looked like the light that guided people to death, since they blossom the opposite of regular flowers. Even now, a lot of people don't like these flowers. To many, they're still considered a bad omen. That's also how they think of me. <sighs> Frederick, you said before that this whole world is all just a dream you're having. Right? But if this is your dream, and you can be so positive that what's happening is just a dream, how can you tell which is the real world if what you're experiencing in the dream is that realistic to you? And to prove my point, you didn't read my mind earlier. <laughs> you were wrong. I was thinking about leaving Tenuto. I want to go out into the world and live my own life, even if that life only exists inside your dream. I don't know how much time I have left to live, but I want to live what's left of my life in a positive way, bringing happiness to others. I just want to help people somehow. Like these flowers, even though people call them death lights, they still blossom and struggle to live on. You're going to leave the village? But where do you intend to go after you leave Tenuto? I'll go to Forte Castle, and then I'm going to meet with the Count to ask about the taxes on floral powder. Because right now, they're hurting everyone in the village. You know, you should be happy you couldn't read my mind. Since you can't use magic, it means you don't have an incurable illness. <sighs> Please, stay at my house tonight. I'll tell my mom you're coming. You're a guest in our dream world, after all. That's not something that happens every day. <laughs> a flower that resembles you. A bad omen. Death lights. Hmm. This is the first time I'm going outside Red Ardondo. It's not like we're going on a picnic, Beat. Don't get so excited. 
Yeah, I know that riddle. We're going to help Redondondo's poor by getting the leaders to lower taxes on stuff besides the mineral powder, right? That way, everyone can afford blankets and cheese and all the honey-covered bread they could ever possibly want. Then everyone can finally be happy, right, Reddo? That's exactly right. Hey, I'm proud of you, Beat. We can't solve things by just stealing bread. We have to uncover the real root of the problem. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> so, uh, where are we going anyway? <sighs> you mean you don't know? Jeez, I take back what I just said. We're heading to Forte Castle to talk to the guys in charge. Come on, let's go. Hey, Riddle, wait up! Okay, you gotta watch yourself, Beat. It's not gonna be the same as fighting the rats in Retardondo. I know. Don't worry. I'll take some good pictures. Pictures? Come on, don't waste time on that stuff. You need to help me fight. Hey, that's not nice. Don't say things like that. Taking pictures isn't a waste of time. Fine, fine. You can tell me all about it later. Come on. Let's get moving. Our party level has gone up, and we're getting better at real fighting, so now I'm gonna teach you something else that's really important. This is the action gauge. Yeah, I know that already. Come on, just listen. Up until now, your action gauge has only gone down when you're actually doing something, right? 
But from now on, as soon as you make your first move, your action gauge will just keep going down no matter what. Huh? What does that mean? What it means is that even when you're standing still, time will keep on passing. If you're not paying attention, your turn will be over before you know it, and it'll be your enemy's turn. What? That's no fair. Fighting like that's going to be really, really hard. Yep, that's right. And that's where tactical time comes in. Tactical time? What's that? Tactical time is the time you get at the beginning of your turn to figure out what it is you're going to do. As long as you don't move or attack, you can stay in tactical time for as long as you want. Okay, so then what you're saying is, the tactical time you get is unlimited, and that would mean... Oh, I get it. So when it's your turn, all you have to do is stay standing still, and then you have lots of time to think about what you're going to do when you start fighting. Exactly. One more thing. From now on, the more echoes you build up, the more power your special attacks will have when they hit an enemy. Echoes? An echo is what you get when your hit count reaches a certain number, and they just keep accumulating right over here. Oh, I get it. In that case, we should just use our special attacks all the time. That way, we'll be building up lots and lots of echoes, and our special attacks will just keep getting stronger and stronger because we'll have so many echoes. It's perfect! We'll be killing two birds with one stone. I am so smart! Not so fast. Unfortunately, when you use your special attacks, all the echoes you've accumulated get used up. Basically, the power of your special attack increases, but you lose all of your echoes because of it. So, if you want to try and build up a lot of echoes, you can't do it by using your special attacks. Oh, but how can you ever get enough echoes to use them with your special attacks? It must be really hard for one person to build up so many all by himself. That's right, and that's why we have to work together to build them up. Echoes don't just belong to you, they belong to everyone who's fighting. But then that means that you could use up all the echoes that I had worked so hard to build up. That doesn't sound very fair, you know. Come on, don't say things like that. I'm counting on you, partner. Beat, look over there at that enemy. What about it? How did that happen? It just turned into a completely different monster. There are some monsters that can transform, depending on whether they're in sunlight or in shadow. Some will get really strong, and some will even change the kinds of attacks they use, so you gotta be really careful. Wash yourself up! Yeah! <laughs> 
just take care of that? What did you think?
Your end is near. Ta!
Your end is near. Not a chance! by the hatred and envy of the dead. Phantom Wave! Your end is near. caught in the rain. So what? We can handle a little rain. I mean, the hideout's roof leaks like crazy. <laughs> and that's just when it drizzles. Yeah, you got a point there. Oh. Looks like it's finally started raining. You know, the rain makes the plants look even more alive. For Chinudo's flowers, the rain is a blessing from heaven.
you foolish creatures! Did you hear that? It's starting to thunder now, too. We should get out of this storm. Is there some place around here where we can take shelter? Hmm, I don't know. Hold on a second. Someone's coming. Oh! Why, hello there. Are you two out looking for something in this wretched weather? I am looking for something myself, but I'm learning that it's not such an easy task when it's pouring down rain like this. Perhaps you wouldn't mind providing me with entertainment to ease my frustration. What? I really do hate it when my clothes get wet. And here I find the two of you just as I was starting to get irritated. I can't stand the smell of this forest, the plants, the animals, and the sweat coming from you people! What are you doing? Stop it! Let's see! Someone! <laughs> Pitiful. I got dirt on my clothes. Oh dear, what am I doing? I really don't have time to play around here with the likes of you. I need to go find that glowing creature. Thank you kindly for the workout. Let me relieve some stress. I think I should be able to get back to my work now. I'm very grateful to both of you. Finally, it looks as though the thunderstorm has passed. How is Frederick's condition? Better. He appears to have settled down somewhat, just like the weather outside. I hope he's all right.
His violent spasms have stopped for the time being. I think he's all right for now. He looks peaceful again. Perhaps he was startled by the lightning. Maybe that's what caused his seizure. Yes, madam, that may very well be true. But I have a suspicion that that wasn't the only cause. I think tonight will be crucial to his recovery. Looks like all that rain and lightning have stopped. Thank goodness. Hey, Beat, did I see you shaking back there? What? No way! I wasn't shaking! Oh, really? You were hanging on to your camera for dear life, weren't you? Well, let's just hurry up and get out of here, okay? What? Oh, terrific. It finally stops raining, so of course now we find a house. Hey, I think I see someone over there. Hello there. Um, do you live in this house? Yes, I do. My name is March. Nice to meet you. My sister and I are the guardians of this forest. So it's just the two of you? Alone? All the way out here? Must be tough. Not at all. I suppose it is dangerous sometimes, but my sister always manages to take care of things. Lately though, I must admit, I've been surprised at how many guests have been showing up around the forest. Are you awake already? You know, you could have stayed in bed longer if you wanted to. Huh? Where... Where am I? You were found lying unconscious at the upper entrance of the forest. The Agogos came to me and told me where I could find you. I think your friend is out taking a walk somewhere nearby. He kept mumbling to himself, something about trying to find inspiration for his music. Um, excuse me, but what are agogos? They're... hmm... well, they're round creatures. Huh? Round creatures? 
Anyway, they don't approach human beings. And recently, the Agogos haven't been showing themselves at all. You're a very lucky person. It's quite unusual for Agogos to take a liking to a human. In fact, I still can't believe they came to me about rescuing a human being at all. This is the first time anything like that's ever happened. So the Agogos rescued me? Even though... Even though I'm... I think maybe you should get some more rest right now. I'll fix you something warm to eat. Oh, I'm sorry, I just realized. I don't even know your name. Who, me? Well, I'm... You're Polka, right? What? You sell floral powder in Retardando. Yeah, I heard someone say your name once. Oh, yeah. And that magic you used was really great, too. Hey, Polka, what's the matter? Why'd she run off like that? Did we say something wrong? Oh, Polka, you're up. I've picked a snack for us. Did something happen? She really shouldn't be running around like that. She's only just recovering. That path doesn't go very far off, though, so at least she shouldn't get lost. Ah! Huh? That's Polka! I can understand that you want to fight, but are you sure? After all, you're recovering too, aren't you? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Right now we have to concentrate on keeping these things away from Polka. Signature. Sacred 
Sacred signature. Thanks. Sacred signature. Okay. That's good. That's good. Your end is near. Not a chance. Sacred signature. Okay. Sacred signature. Thanks. Signature, thanks. Sacred signature, thanks. Sacred signature, okay. <laughs> Did you get hurt? No, I'm all right. Thank you. Thank goodness you're all right. Huh? What... what is that thing? Hmm. I bet it's one of those agogos that girl was talking about before. It's kind of weird. Look, Reddo, it's glowing. A go go. Thank you for saving me. I've never seen one of those before. Oh, I know. I'll take a picture of it. Where did it go? Great job, Beat. You scared it off by taking that stupid thing out. I wish I could have touched it. Gee, I'm sorry, Reddo. So your name is Beat? Agogos are probably very shy creatures. I'm sure it'll come out again. And I take it your name is Reddo. Is that short for something else? I'm Allegretto. I have a little store in Retardando. It's small, but we have a tough time keeping stuff in stock each day. Anyway, enough about me. What's a powder seller like you doing way out here? Are you headed somewhere? I, uh... Hmm. 
Mom, I'm going to see the Count at Forte Castle. Now is not the time to discuss this. We have a guest in the house. I told you, the reason floral powder isn't selling is because people can buy mineral powder so cheaply. I'm sure he'll understand if I talk to him. Polka dear, don't be foolish. You can't possibly go all the way to the castle in Forte by yourself. I've already made up my mind. Don't try to stop me. Polka! Dear, it's not that important if floral powder doesn't sell. We'll survive somehow. Polka, are you listening? Polka, please. If you can hear me, then answer me. Polka, are you listening? Oh, uh, yes. I... I'm on my way to Forte. That's a pretty long name. Could you say it one more time? Frederick Francois Chopin. But you can just call me Frederick. Frederick, huh? Okay, no problem. I'm really good at remembering people's names. You said you're going to Forte. Do you mean Forte Castle? Yes, I do. You should know that Forte is not a very friendly place right now. It's much nicer here in a go-go forest. The Count of Forte Castle is responsible for mining Mount Rock. He's been making some kind of medicine. Ah, you mean mineral powder, right? Yes, my sister Salsa is on her way there right now. She's going to ask them to stop the mining. I get it. And you stayed behind here to keep watch on things. If someone doesn't do something, the Agogos are going to lose their home. That's terrible. I was actually going to ask them to reduce the amount of mineral powder they're selling. Then this is perfect. I hope I'm not asking too much from you. But if you could possibly do me this one favor... Here! If you happen to meet my sister in Forte, could you give her this hat? But how? I mean, we don't even know what your sister looks like. That won't be a problem at all. You see, we're twins, so just look for someone who looks exactly like me. Gotcha. All right, then. I think we can handle that. Come on, let's get moving, Polka. We can go together. What? Go to Forte together? But I... Yes, good idea. I think that would be much better. We're all heading to the same place. We should stick together, right? Besides, if you collapse again, the Agogos might not be there to rescue you next time. Go together? Dear, it's not that important if floral powder doesn't sell. We'll survive somehow. Polka, are you listening? Polka, please. If you can hear me, then answer me. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry. The truth is, this is about more than just the floral powder. I don't have long to live, so I want to do something meaningful with that time. I think that meeting Frederick helped me realize what I really want to do with my life.
I don't have much time, but I, I want to use my power for good somehow. I want to help as many people as I can before it's too late. I'm not going to worry about what other people think. If they're scared of getting sick and they want to stay away from me, that's fine. Up until now, every stranger has been my enemy. I'd convinced myself of that and couldn't trust anyone. But not anymore. Now I'm going to start off by trusting people. Because if I can do that, then... I think I can become a heaven's mirror. Go together. Yes. I'd really like that. Okay. Then we should get going. Oh, Frederick, by the way, what are you going to do? I was heading for Forte as well. What? You're going to Forte too, Frederick? Oh, that's great. I guess that means we're all going to the same place. This trip is really getting crowded, huh? March, thank you so much for everything. Don't mention it. And if you ever come through the forest again, please drop by. Ah, oh, darn. I wish I'd gotten another chance to take a picture of that glowing Agogo. Oh, well. Are you still going on about that? You know you can just go back to that same cave again later. Allegretto's right. As long as some Agogo show themselves, I'm sure you'll get to take a picture of them next time. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I wonder what they meant by a glowing agogo. I suppose it must have just looked as if it was glowing, because I've never heard of a gogo's glowing before. <laughs> Please, there is no need to do any such thing. What can Andantino possibly do? Do they think they'll start a revolution just by declaring they oppose the government? Still, my lord, we've received reports of Andantino engaging in activities to disturb the peace. Perhaps it would be best to nip this in the bud. Legato, stop worrying. Disturbing the peace is exactly what rebels do. Well, yes. But a revolution involves toppling a country's government. Do you really think Andantino is capable of doing that? No. No matter how many followers they gather, Forte Castle will not fall. Andantino knows that, perhaps better than anyone. And yet they continue to fight. Why do you think that is? Didn't you hear me? I asked you a question. Why does Andantino continue to fight? Well, I... Don't know the answer? It's because there is someone backing them. They're not stupid. They haven't stopped fighting because they think they have a chance to win. So that means our true enemy is the one who is backing Andantino. We'll let Andantino play out their game. They're no threat. 
And besides, Legato, we're already one step ahead of them. <laughs> How pitiful, you soulless creatures!
Let's go! Sacred signature! Sacred signature! Thanks! Don't get cocky. You're going down. Top end! 
did you think? Look up ahead, everyone. There's someone there. Get back! I won't let you lay a finger on my goats! You'll have to get through me first. We have to help that woman! So, how about we go around? Have a nice nap! your help. You all managed to save my goats. Who was with those guys anyway? They were weird, and they all used magic. Yes, they had the ability to use magic, which means that they must be terminally ill, doesn't it? But why on earth would they attack us like that? They had a strange, evil look in their eyes. What? You mean you don't know? That's what happens to people when they use mineral powder for too long. What? You mean, if you keep using mineral powder, you might end up like those guys? But... lots of people in Retardando are using it. That's why floral powders aren't selling. So that's it. The mineral powder. I knew something fishy was going on. 
It's been bugging me for a while, and now I get it. Huh? What do you get? Come on. Think for a minute, Beat. Why do you think mineral powder is the only thing that's not taxed? Well, that's an easy one. It's because Count Waltz is doing something nice for his people. No, dummy. You can't see things for what they are because you're always looking through that lens. Listen, try again and this time think about it more. Isn't it strange that mineral powder is the only thing that's not being taxed? Yeah, I guess. But that's okay, because since mineral powder is so cheap, it can help lots of people. True. Mineral powder does cure most illnesses, but it has some very serious side effects. Mineral powder is actually closer to a poison. It drives people mad and eventually can lead to death. You saw it for yourselves. That's horrible. Well, grazing time is over for today. Hey, why don't you all stop by my place for a while? It's not very far from here at all, so come on. My name is Viola, and this little guy over here is my partner, Arco. Oh, how cute. So mineral powder's a poison. But there must be more to it than that. Some reason for their wanting to distribute it amongst the people. What could Count Waltz's real objective be? That's what I'd like to know, too. He cannot possibly want to kill all of his own subjects, can he? Who knows? I've heard that there are lots of dark rumors about the Count. But if he wanted to kill his own people, there are easier and faster ways to go about doing it. Now, wait a minute. Maybe he doesn't know about the side effects of the mineral powder. Is it really possible that he doesn't know? I'm not sure. I mean, mineral powder has its uses, but just because it's useful doesn't mean that it's good. Those involved might not realize what's wrong until it's too late. Unless someone does something about this soon, there won't be anything anyone can do to stop it. And since we can see what's going on, it's up to us to let them know. They like how convenient it is so much, they don't see the danger they'll face later. I see. People might notice that something isn't right, but they can't bring themselves to give it up because it makes life easier for them. It's true what they say. The longer you wait, the harder the cure. Regardless of whether Count Waltz knows or not, I don't see any other option than to go to Forte Castle. Once there, we may learn more. If possible, we should try to meet with the Count in person and discuss his intentions directly. <laughs> you guys are really something. I'm actually starting to believe you'll be able to make a difference. And since my bow has some life in it... Okay, that settles it. I'm going with you guys to the castle. Besides, I owe Count Waltz some payback. A bunch of my poor little goats have been killed because of what he's done. What? You're telling me we've got another one now? Oh, terrific. Sorry, buddy, not so fast. You've actually got two more coming with you. Arco and I always travel together.
This is a really old bridge. If you fell from here, you'd be dead for sure. Since I don't usually take the goats this far out to graze, this is actually the first time I've ever crossed this bridge. You have to cross the Cabasa Bridge if you want to get to Forte Castle from Retardando. I understand. This bridge is a form of protection. It creates a single point of defense for Forte territory against any attacks that may come from the south. Bingo! Hey, you're pretty darn smart, aren't you? That's right. And it's also why there's a fort at one end of the bridge. It's called... I think it's called Fort Fermata, isn't it? Yeah, right. Fermata, that's it. Let's be careful going across, okay? We don't want to fall. Oh, I think I'm gonna wet myself. Well, Fugue, did you learn anything new? Yes, my lord. It was relatively easy to find the creatures in question. But unfortunately, I could not find a single one that glows. I've no interest in hearing about your failure. Yes, but... We know from experiments that mixing those creatures into the powder doubles its effectiveness. And we've also heard several eyewitness accounts of some of them glowing. I must have them, no matter what. If we obtain some that glow, even by conservative estimates, the potency will increase tenfold. It is our duty to protect the well-being of our citizens. The role of a government is to serve its citizens to the utmost of its ability. If the powder's effectiveness increases, the people will be happy, will they not? I can just see the smiling faces of my subjects. <laughs> so, now that you understand what's at stake, you will go and search for them again. And don't come back until you've found them. This is for our beloved subjects. Yes. I won't listen to another report of failure, understand? My lord, the mining operation at Mount Rock is proceeding smoothly. Mineral powder production is also increasing according to plan. There's no need to report when things are going well. Uh. Well, we made it across in one piece. How's it going, B? So, did you wet yourself? Uh, no, of course not. It's strange, though. Do they actually think that someone will attack Forte from the south? After all, the only big city that's south of here is Retardando. Do they really need to keep watch from here? That's a good question, but just take a look around this place. I never said they were actually keeping watch. Yes. Now that you mention it, I do not see any soldiers posted here. Yeah. That is weird. I figured a fort of all places would have lots of guards. Well, this fort was in use a long time ago. You see, 
Retardando was attacked by pirates lots of times. This is the best spot for a fort if Retardando was ever beaten by enemy forces. Even so, right now it's just a comfy home for people who've been driven mad by the mineral powder. But we go around. Oh. Orange glow! Huh. Perfect! 
There is power within my melodies. Listen. Pew Grave! Now you will rest. Orange Glow! Orange Glow!
You foolish creatures! Your end is near! Yeah! <laughs> 
blow. Thanks. Perfect. How was that? So, how about we go around? Phantom <laughs> way! Your end is... No! 
Just watch this! Your end is near. How pitiful, you soulless creatures! Your end is near. Go back. Back into a nebulous dream.
You foolish creatures! Not a chance! Your end is near. You grab it. Now you will rest. I really wanted to challenge. Right on! Now you will rest. Orange glow. Orange 
glow. creatures. Oh! 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 Oh!
Goodness, this really isn't much of a fort, is it? Nope, they're more worried about an invasion from Baroque these days. They've probably pulled out almost all the troops from here. No matter how much time passes, war remains. Yeah, that's true. I've even heard rumors that Baroque has been supporting Andantino. For Baroque, it's an easy way to shake up things in Forte, without getting their hands too dirty. Andantino? They're an underground group that's been trying to start a revolution in Forte territory. Basically, they're a bunch of rebels. Wouldn't a revolution be destructive? But isn't a revolution better than nothing? It may improve people's lives a little. And that's a good thing, right? Hmm, it's not that simple, Beat. Think about everyone involved. Andantino, Baroque, Forte. Which one should win? We ordinary people don't have any way of knowing which of them is right. I would imagine they have their own agendas. One of them has to be the good guy, right? Who knows? They might all be evil in their own way. Then again, they might all be right. It's hard to be sure. Then, how are we supposed to figure out whose justice really is true justice?
Understand? Uh, can you explain it again, Jazz? Ugh, Claves. Why do you always need things repeated? I'm sorry, but this is an important mission, so I want to make sure I get it right. Yes. This mission is vital to our cause. I'll explain it once more. Is that all right, Falsetto? Fine. The objective of this mission is to rescue the guardian of Ogogo Forest, who is being held in the dungeon beneath Forte Castle. We'll infiltrate the castle tomorrow at dawn. But the castle gates are heavily guarded. What will we do about that? We'll use the underground passage between Hanan Hills and the prison. This information is solid. Our members spent a full year investigating it. Falsetto's right. It won't be that difficult a mission. We just have to bring the Guardian back. Why are we rescuing her anyway? I mean, how will rescuing her benefit on Dantino? Apparently, Waltz is searching for glowing Agogos. One of our members spotted his man Fugue in the Agogo forest. So, it makes sense that they would want to detain the Guardian and make her tell them about the glowing Agogos. The glowing Agogos? But what on earth does Waltz want those for? Well, they do taste good in soup. Falsetto, if you don't take this seriously, We'll end up making a mess of even the easiest missions. <sighs> Fine. Apparently, a gogo's double the effectiveness of ordinary mineral powder, and glowing a gogo's will probably increase it even further. If Waltz gets his hands on those, he'll have an unlimited supply of mindless soldiers. I guess from Waltz's point of view. By multiplying the effect of the mineral powder with the glowing agogos, he'll be multiplying the number of troops he has at his disposal. I get it now. And then he'll use those troops to fight against Andantino. I don't know about that. I seriously doubt he'll be attacking Andantino anytime soon. He probably considers Baroque more of a threat. I'll write you two. Come on. I think it's about time we cut the chatter and got to work.
What the? Hey, there's a breeze coming from the crack in this rock. Perfect! <laughs> 
They're attacking because they're afraid of us. Yeah! Not bad at all. I did it! It's gotten really late. Yes, you're right. All of today's public audiences with the Count must be long over by now. Well, we're not in that big a hurry. We can go to the castle in the morning. Let's go find an inn for the night. have run off to now. If he gets caught goofing off again, he's gonna be in big trouble. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, did you want to stay the night? My friend Phil is supposed to be watching the front desk right now, but I can't find him anywhere. Knowing him, he's probably run off the place somewhere in the city. But Phil's mother is really scary. I don't even want to think about what might happen if she finds out he's goofing off. He's practically risking his life by wandering off like this. Aren't you overreacting? Being punished is just a part of learning how to behave. It's not that simple. You don't know what Phil's mom is like. It'll be terrible if she finds out. It would be a lot worse than him getting sent to bed with no dinner or a hundred spankings. Hey, I got an idea. Could you guys go find Phil for me? Huh? Why us? Don't you feel sorry for poor Phil? Please go find him. You'll be saving his life, literally. All right, fine. I guess we could go look around for him. It's already getting pretty late, so I'm guessing he probably hasn't left the city.
Hey, there's something on the ground. It looks like a kid's shoe. Wait a sec. Do you think he could have fallen off the cliff? Better pull your head in.
All right, let's go. Now you will 
asleep. Good you really are. Such a cry baby. started. Yeah! 
Now you will sleep. Thanks a lot. That was close. Are you sure you're really okay? I mean, you fell down from pretty high up there, kid. Anyway, shouldn't you be getting back home soon? Oh no, you're right. I really have to get going. I don't want to get killed by my mom right after having my life saved. See ya. Thanks again. Hey, thanks for helping me back there. Mom didn't find out. I really owe you one. Koto told me you guys are looking for a place to stay for the night. Since you guys saved my life, you can stay here no charge. On the house. I see the whole group has arrived. Hey, he looks like someone in authority around here. You're right, he does. Let's go ask him if he can get us an audience with Count Waltz. Hold it. We already know all about your plan. Let's keep this very simple. Don't resist us, and none of you will get hurt. Now just hold on. Something doesn't appear to be quite right with this situation. Hey, mister. We came here because we want to see whoever's in charge of this castle. Oh, you'll see him all right. From your cell. Beat, no! Hey, mister, what do you think you're doing? Let's have a little fun. <laughs> 
Just stand still and give up already. I'm ready for you. Bring it on! Yes, I underestimated them. You there, throw them into the dungeon. C cut it out! What are you doing? Hey, who's this little girl? Just who do you think you're calling a little girl, huh, old lady? Old lady? Why, you little... No, no. Don't fight. Oh, what's this? Just who do you think you are, you little runt? Can't you see I'm busy talking to this old lady right now? Huh? R runt Hey, I'm almost the exact same height as you. You called me old lady again! You're gonna pay for that! Please, you three. Let's all just settle down. Unfortunately, I must admit I'm rather at a loss as to what to do next. No problem, that's an easy one. We'll just have to break out of here. Huh. It's one crazy after another with you people. If it was that easy to get out, they wouldn't call it a dungeon. Hey, your name is Salsa, isn't it? We saw your sister, and she told us to give this to you. Ooh, thanks a bunch. <laughs> I just never feel quite myself if I don't have this. So then, you people met March? My sister can be so unfriendly and rude sometimes. I hope she didn't say anything that might have upset you. Huh. I'm guessing March has all the social skills in the family. 
No kidding. Hmm, by the way, how did you people figure out that I was Salsa? Uh, we just had a feeling. Wait, I've got it. You're a magician. That's how you knew who I was. And a magician can make himself disappear. So you're going to disappear and then reappear outside the cell walls, right? Disappearing isn't all that magicians can do. They can free themselves from handcuffs and stuff, and poof, just like that, they can unlock cell doors, too. Of course. I forgot about that part. So you are a magician. Hey, you may be a little runt, but at least you're way smarter than that old lady over there. Hey, thanks, Pete. Wow, Allegretto. I'm impressed. You really seem like you know what you're doing. Oh, uh, well, you know, I am a magician after all. I get it, Retto. You just don't want Polka to know what it is you really do, right? Well, you don't have to worry about me spilling the beans. My lips are still tight as a clam. <laughs> I think we can all imagine what kinds of things you were up to in Retardando. Don't worry about it. Tight as a clam, is that so? Hmm. Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever seen a clam that had its shell completely closed. Come on, let's hurry and get out of here already! What is it, Salsa? We need to keep moving. Hey, just come here a second. Huh? Well, what is it? Now stand right there. Aha! See? I knew it! Just like I said before, I am taller than you. Ha ha! What are you talking about? You're only taller because you have a hat on. That's not fair. Come on, we gotta hurry. Oh, jeez.
you get serious sooner, I'll pound you! You better pull your head in. Have a nice nap. Take that! <laughs> 
I'll hit you so hard your brains will go inside out. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice nap! <laughs> Such a crybaby. Haunted by the hatred and envy of the dead. Phantom Way! Your end is near. Have a nice nap! Back off.
All right, then. There should be a switch behind this rock. Falsetto, if you wouldn't mind doing the honors. Right. I'm even stronger than I thought I was. Uh, who are you people? And how did you know about this secret passageway? We were being held prisoner in the dungeon of Forte Castle. That's right. We didn't even do anything wrong and they threw us in a cell like criminals. No kidding. Anyone would have run away. Oh, my hair is a total mess. Those guys are terrible. They just arrested us and threw us in the dungeon, and we didn't even do anything wrong to deserve it. Well, technically, I guess there are some bad things I've done, but still... It's true. We were arrested at the entrance to the castle for no reason. I swear, we haven't done anything. It would seem they're not our enemies. I suppose you're right. Let's hurry up and get back to the mission. Wait a minute, Falsetto. I pretty much understand what happened to the rest of you. But what about you? Why were you arrested? Now that you mention it, we don't know that yet either. Who? Me? 
Well, I just came to talk to the fellow in charge about what's happening in a go, -Go forest. Please, listen to me! What you're doing is destroying the whole forest! Young lady, I'm tired of repeating myself. But it's true! If you don't stop the mining at Mount Rock, the forest is going to die! The mountain and the forest are connected! I've told you, we cannot make mineral powder without the mines at Mount Rock. That powder is responsible for saving the lives of many of our people. Sir, a Gogo forest is our home. But if you keep digging... Hold on! A Gogo forest? You're telling me you live in a Gogo forest? I have been a guardian of a Gogo forest since the day that I was born. This is the first time I've come to a city like this. Guards, please come and show our guest to a room. What? Isn't this girl the guardian of a go-go forest? It seems our mission is complete. Hey, you guys sound like you know something about what's going on around here. Why don't you come back to my village with the rest of us? Besides, once they realize we've escaped, they might come after us. She brings up a good point. We shouldn't stay here much longer. We must leave. What are you people going to do? What should we do, Jazz? Good question. I'm not really sure, though I must admit, it's thanks to them that our mission was a resounding success. That's right, and much earlier than we planned, too. It looks like we've got some extra time now. Let's listen to what they have to say. Maybe they can tell us about the inside of Forte Castle. It's boring when things always go according to plan. It's nice to have things shaken up every once in a while. It's okay with you, isn't it, Claves? Yes, of course. Then it's settled. Allegretto, is something the matter? Oh, no, it's nothing, really. I was just thinking, I really need to play with Beat more often. Well, Beat did do his best. Yeah, he didn't do too badly. For a clam, anyway. Really, Tuba? Were you expecting Andantino to just show up at the front gate bearing gifts for us? M my apologies, Count Waltz. Listen carefully, Tuba. I don't think I need to tell you that this is your last chance. Find them and eliminate them all. Immediately. Yes, my lord. No, wait. The guardian of Agogo Forest. Bring her back alive. That is the will of the people, after all.
By the way, Frederick, what are you making this trip for? I don't think you ever told us. Frederick. Mr. Chopin is taking a journey on which he will have to face himself. Whether that journey will end with his return home or with his acceptance of death, we cannot be certain. Frederick, please come back to us. I'm not really certain. You're not certain? You're traveling, but you don't know why? I believe I will be able to tell you when the time is right. You see, I have yet to sort out my own feelings about all of this. Hmm. Well, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. I'm not trying to be nosy or anything. I am no longer sure if this world truly is a dream. Maybe it is real after all. Perhaps the world I thought of as reality was in fact nothing more than a dream. But then would that mean the cities of Warsaw and Paris do not exist? No, I'm sure they existed. I'm sure as I am that my own name the name of Frederick Francois Chopin has gone down in history in those cities as a famed pianist and composer. I am not mistaken. This is a dream. No matter how unquestionably close it is to reality, this is still just a dream. Unquestionably close to reality? Hmm. How can it be that ambiguous? What will happen to me when I am no longer able to recognize that a dream is merely a dream? To not be able to recognize that a dream is a dream, what a horrifying prospect! And conversely, would a person like that even be able to recognize that reality is reality? No. How could they? Why should there be a need to recognize that reality is reality in the first place? No one actually thinks about something as obvious as that in their daily life. In the same way, the presence of air goes unnoticed. It's so common it isn't really recognized, is it? But if something cannot be recognized, does it even exist? I am being tested. That must be what's happening. There's something I meant to realize on this journey. Paris and Warsaw are irrelevant. If my dreams and reality have already mixed, then... Then I must do my best to live life in this merged world. That is what's most important. Hey, Frederick. Is something the matter? No, it's nothing. Hey, we're almost there. Let's hurry.
That was about what we expected. Huh? Gee, I didn't get it. That was kind of hard for me to understand. Oh, I understood it just fine. But why don't we explain it one more time for the little guy? To put it simply, if there's no tax on mineral powder, then it follows that everyone will keep using it. And the side effect of the powder is that it allows people to use magic. Then, once they go mad and become mindless warriors, they can be made soldiers. I get it. Then Forte's army will grow many times in size. And they'll easily defeat Baroque. But only people who are dying can use magic, right? So when they do die, Forte will lose its soldiers. Yes. So in order to maintain the army, they'll flood the market with more and more powder. And that means floral powder will just continue selling less and less. Then as more mineral powder is sold, the number of soldiers will go on increasing. It would be a never-ending spiral, one that will lead straight to hell. Wait a second. If they keep on doing this, building up an army for a war that may or may not happen, then sooner or later, there won't be any people left. Yes, that's exactly right, Beat. You figured that out fast. Uh. Hmm. It really is just a complete waste. And Waltz realizes that too. That's why he's trying to increase the strength of the mineral power. The Count understands that if he can supply soldiers to the front line at any time, Forte's military power will essentially be without limit. And apparently, they need to mix glowing agogos into the mineral powder in order to accomplish that. Though I hear they also taste good in soup. Huh? Glowing agogos? I don't remember there being any glowing agogos. <laughs> I'm glad you people like babbling so much. It made finding all of you here very easy. Huh? Hey, that's him! That's the guy who locked us away in the dungeon! That's right! And this time I really mean business! Cause my life's on the line too! Even if you run, you won't get away, got it? I'm gonna get you back a hundred times for before! Dem 
It's been four days already. I hope that Polka and the others are okay. Ah, Polka and the others, huh? Not Beat and the others? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm sure they're doing just fine. Look at us. We're managing. Look, Arco's saying cheer up, too. Oh, hey, Jazz, by the way, what's the name of that river we fell into back there? Fusion River. It carries rainfall from Mount Rock down to the Blue Sea. The rich earth from Mount Rock flows down with the water, so crops tend to grow very well in the nearby regions of the river. No, that was in the past. Ever since Walt started mining Mount Rock, things have changed a lot around this area. A lifetime to build, but it only takes a moment to destroy. You know, 
Human beings really are masters of destruction. Everything we do has some effect on the environment. And ultimately, that ends up affecting human society as well. That's very true. There should be a small inn past this swamp. Once we make it there, the rest of the way shouldn't be a problem. We'll need to be up early tomorrow. Let's go! Show me what you've got! Unicorn horn! Well, what did you expect? I'm not going to let you get in our way!
you, Pop. Going strong. Don't hold anything back. Take that! Let's keep moving forward. Just attack! You mustn't hesitate! Take that! Sky Divider! Have a nice nap! Sorry, but I'm not going to go easy on you. Sky Divider! Have a nice nap. Magma Pillar! Haven't you had enough yet? Take that! Have a nice 
abysmal pillar! All right, let's keep moving forward. Strong. Don't hold anything back. There! There! Don't strike the fire. Have a nice nap. No good. Magma pillar. Haven't you had enough yet? Take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. Heal arrow. Bullseye. Let's keep moving forward. Heal arrow! 
I'm going to let you get in our way. Are you catching on yet? Sky Divider! Have a nice nap. No good. Magma pillar! Haven't you had enough yet? Well strike! Chew on that! Not much to you, huh? worn out. That's the inn we told you about. We've only ever been here once before, and that was quite a long time ago. I'm glad to see it's still here. Hey, it's already pretty late. Let's just stay here for the night. Good idea. We'll set out again tomorrow morning. But for tonight, let's get some rest. My lord, the Kabasa Bridge has fallen. It appears Tuba fell to his death along with the others. Ugh, that useless fool. He wasn't satisfied taking his own life. He had to kill the guardian of a Gogo forest, too. What shall we do, my lord? Oh well, all we need to do is find the glowing Agogos. This just proves how worthless Tuba really was. 
I feel more sorry for the bridge. After all, it had to support that behemoth's weight. <laughs> I really like the feel of this place a lot. It has the same smell as the place where I live. Are the goats that you left behind going to be all right? Yeah, I'm sure they'll be completely fine. I mean, when I left them, they weren't fenced in or anything. And those goats are pretty smart, too. I'm sure they are. But no matter how smart they might be, I doubt they could guess the reason their master hasn't come back yet. Is because she fell into a river. <laughs> You're probably right about that. Oh, are you out for some air too, Allegretto? This area gets kind of cool at night, so it's nice. What's bothering you, Allegretto? I know what it is. I bet you're thinking about Polka, right? What's the matter? I've been thinking about this for a while now. The people that attacked us? I get the feeling they thought we were part of Andantino. Huh? I see the whole group has arrived. Hey, he looks like someone in authority around here. You're right, he does. Let's go ask him if he can get us an audience with Count Waltz. Hold it. We already know all about your plan. Let's keep this very simple. Don't resist us, and none of you will get hurt. You have a point. No matter what they might say about Count Waltz, even he wouldn't give orders to kill ordinary citizens who are just coming to visit him. Exactly. That guy sounded like he knew that someone was supposed to be showing up at that time, and he was waiting for them. Jazz, it sounds like you might have an information leak. What? Yeah. It's possible you've got a spy working in your group. But Claves and Falsetto are the only ones who knew about that mission. That would mean... reach the town of Andante just after these woods. We're finally back home.
Well, are you ready or what? Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> Are you catching on yet? Let's keep moving forward. Good. Don't hold anything. Are you catching on yet? Let's keep moving forward. Don't think, just attack. You mustn't hesitate. 
Are you catching on yet? Are you catching on yet? No good. All right, let's keep moving forward. Let's go! Show me what you've got! Uh. Are you catching on yet? Take that! Are you catching on yet? Take that! You're a mess. Come on, let's go! Show me what you've got! <laughs> Away to nothing. He 
Sweet money! All right, let's keep moving forward. Well, are you ready or what? Let's get started. <laughs>
not going to let you get in our way. I didn't think we'd ever get back after we fell into that river. Um, what do you mean, we made it? There's nothing here. <laughs> 
It's no wonder you're confused. You can't see it, but the town of Andante is right under your feet. It's underground? Yes, though it's not that impressive. But it's more than enough for us to live comfortably. After all, we are a rebel army. We're supposed to be underground, right? <laughs> This is Andantino's headquarters. Everyone here is one of us. Please make yourselves at home. Falsetto, would you mind showing our guests around the town? No problem. Okay, we'll go on ahead. When you get tired of sightseeing, come and join us. Where are you going? To the house we've been using as a base. It's right on the shore of Lake Reverb. Basically, it's our hideout. It's a short walk from here. Later. Well, let's get going.
Let's go! Show me what you've got! Knife it! Chew on that! Take that! Ha! I'm not gonna lose! I'm not going to let you get in our way. Chew on that. Pretty good, huh? I'm not going to let you get in our way. Chew on that. I really wanted a challenge.
They're attacking because they're afraid of us. Snowball! Are you catching on yet? What did you think? Let's go! Show me what you've got! Are you catching on yet? Pretty good, huh? You don't look so good. Chew on that! Get away! Go and wash yourself up! I'm not going to let you get in our- Are you catching on yet?
on, let's go! Show me what you've got! Are you catching on yet? Looks like we won. You know, we did kind of just barge in here all of a sudden. 
Now that I think about it, it may just have been protecting the graveyard against intruders. Well, I'd feel kind of bad about that then. Don't worry. I'm sure it's all right. Now, let's get the simile water and start heading back. What is it, Jazz? It seems like you have something on your mind. Claves, what do you think of Falsetto? Huh? What do you mean? We have an information leak on our hands. There's a spy within our ranks, and I think that it may very well be Falsetto. What? You don't think she's been acting strange lately? She's being oddly combative. Especially toward you. Think about it. She never used to be like that. Well, it could be. That falsetto is just jealous of us. I sincerely hope that's all it is. Even so, there is definitely something she's hiding from me. I've known her since childhood, so we can tell almost everything about each other. Everything. Hold on. If there's a spy among us, wouldn't the guards have been watching the dungeon? Remember, our plan was to infiltrate the dungeon directly through the secret passage. Yes, that is true. It must have been a coincidence. I can't believe Falsetto is a spy. Yes, you're right. Thanks, Claves. That's a relief. I was just about to lose my faith in Falsetto. It sure is taking them a long time. You think I should go to Andante and get them? Yes, that's a good idea. Guess it's nothing. You fool. The information you provided us was very valuable. But I was ordered to kill you if your identity was revealed. Don't take it personally. I know you. You're Rondo. Falsetto has suspected you for some time now. I suppose sooner or later, they were bound to find out. You had the perfect chance to frame her as the spy, but you just let it pass. And you know that failure cannot go unpunished. I already knew that Falsetto suspected it was me. Ugh, Claves, why do you always need things repeated? Well, they do taste good in soup. I don't know about that. I seriously doubt he'll be attacking Andantino anytime soon. It's boring when things always go according to plan. It's nice to have things shaken up every once in a while. It's okay with you, isn't it, Claves? Ugh. 
A lifetime to build, but it only takes a moment to destroy. You know, human beings really are masters of destruction. Everything we do has some effect on the environment. And ultimately, that ends up affecting human society as well. Waltz really made a mistake when he chose me for this mission. Because I went and fell in love with the target. As a spy, I guess I'm a total failure. But more than that, I'm an idiot too. Why did I... why did I say those things to him? Well, it could be that Falsetto is just jealous of us. I sincerely hope that's all it is. Even so, there is definitely something she's hiding from me. I've known her since childhood, so we can tell almost everything about each other. Everything. When he was saying that he and Falsetto knew everything about each other, I felt so... The truth is, I guess I'm the one who's jealous of them. As a woman, I just didn't want to lose to Falsetto. I wanted to fight for him fairly and have him choose me. <laughs> oh, what am I saying? A fair fight is the last thing that would suit someone as deceitful as me. And yet, after all that I've done... Hold on. If there's a spy among us, wouldn't the guards have been watching the dungeon? Remember, our plan was to infiltrate the dungeon directly through the secret passage. I even surprised myself when I said it. I can't believe I didn't take advantage of my chance to frame Falsetto. Maybe Rondo was right. If I had just made her out to be the spy, my job and my love life would have been easy. But it's strange. I don't regret it at all. Actually, for the first time in my life, I feel like I could start everything brand new. Yes, that is true. It must have been a coincidence. I can't believe Falsetto is a spy. Yes, you're right. Thanks, Claves. That's a relief. I was just about to lose my faith in Falsetto. <laughs> well, ultimately, I guess I lose both in work and in love. I wish... I wish I had grown up with Jazz. Then, just maybe I would have led a life better than the one I did. I truly envy Falsetto. This will be my final gift to both of them. Now go, fly, but your destination isn't Forte anymore. It's Baroque. It's done. I had to do at least one good deed in the end, or else...
the Valkyries would never come for me. I wonder if they'll ever figure out who the spy was. That it was me. Yes, I'm sure Falsetto will tell them. Were my feelings real? Or was it all just some kind of illusion? Everything I've ever done has always just been an act. But at least, at the end, I want to be the real me. I... I truly loved you. Oh, Polka! There you are! I've been looking all over the place for you, you know. Oh, hi, Beat. I'm sorry about that. Hey, you've been staring at flowers a lot lately. You don't have to be worried. I'm sure Reto and the others are doing okay. Reto's not the type to croak from just falling off a bridge. You have a point there. I'm sure you're right. Thank you, Beat. Still, we were pretty lucky back there, don't you think? If we hadn't been picked up by that Baroque ship, I don't know what would have happened. Thank you so much for helping us like this. Don't mention it. It was nothing. Is there any way we can repay you? You did save our lives. Yeah, you've already done so much for us. Is there anything we can do to help out? <laughs> this little squirt here can wash dishes for you or something. <gasps> hey, no fair! You can't start calling me little squirt just because my hat washed away. <laughs> At least it sounds like you're all in good spirits. But I'm afraid there's nothing you could help with. Really, you should probably all just get some rest. Oh, and allow me to introduce myself. My name is Crescendo. I suppose you could say I'm the captain of this ship. Huh? Cr Cres Cres Crescendo? G gee, that's kind of a tough name to say. Couldn't we call you something else? Something easier to say? Beat, please, don't be silly. Besides, I thought you said you were good at remembering people's names. I must say, you're very young to be the captain of a ship. You're a captain? Hey, hold on now. This guy doesn't even have a hook or an eye patch. Hm, there's no way he's a real captain. I'm sorry, Captain. I apologize for her rudeness. Hey, maybe I'll just call you Captain for now. I could remember your name, no problem, but you need to show respect to the ship's captain. <laughs> Feel free to call me whatever you'd like, really. Well, Captain Crescendo, thank you for your kindness. I think we'll get some rest as you suggested.
I wonder if Allegretto and the others are all right. I think I'll go outside. Maybe some fresh air will cheer me up. So the world is all just Frederick's dream. Good evening, Frederick. You still haven't woken up from your dream yet? <laughs> oh, hello, Polka. Are you having trouble sleeping? Yes. I'm still worried about the others. Polka, there was something I said to you before. About the way everything in the world slowly fades away, gradually losing its color. But since I've come to this place, I've begun to feel as if that is somehow being reversed. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, compared to when I first came to this world, now, when I look around, I feel as if everything in the world is becoming more vivid, more clear. Could that be the proof I sought? Does it mean that this world, that I believe to be a dream, is slowly becoming reality? Or is it only proof that I, myself, am slipping away? Fading away at a speed faster than the world is fading. For example, I find myself wondering about whether the others are all right. Not long ago, I really wouldn't have cared what happened to them. 
After all, this was just a dream to me. But now, I'm genuinely concerned. I don't know why, but I feel a strong sense of solidarity, a connection with the people of this world. That's okay. I think that's probably normal. After all, it's only natural to worry about companions you've spent a lot of time with. You know, before I was afflicted with illness, everything around me seemed so meaningless. But ever since I learned I didn't have much longer to live, even the little things in the world around me began to shine. Like the sound of wood crackling in a fireplace, the smell of a campfire, leaves slowly floating down a stream, the gentle sound of falling snow, Now that I think about it, it was probably because I had begun to fade rapidly. Because I myself was approaching my death. Just as Amelia did. Amelia? My sister. She was 14 when she was struck down by tuberculosis and passed away. The same age as you. Your sister was 14, just like me when she... I see. How disheartening must it have been for her to be forced to accept inescapable fate? She must have had so many hopes and dreams. Why? Why does God allow such things to happen to good people? Taking away even her chance to live. Poor Amelia. It is sad, but everyone dies eventually. It's just that for some people like Amelia and me, it happens a little bit earlier, that's all. Besides, in a way, Amelia still lives on, doesn't she? She lives on inside your heart, Frederick. And she lives in the wonderful music that your heart creates. She also lives on inside all the people of the world whose hearts are moved when they listen to your music. Amelia won't ever really die. She'll touch the hearts of every generation to come. Through her brother's melodies, she will live on forever. I think that's simply wonderful. Frederick, do you need any more proof that she's still alive than the thought of that? You know, Polka, whenever I'm with you, I feel like I'm talking to Amelia. I think that perhaps Amelia is saying the very same things to me. Thank you, Polka. I believe you've taught me something very important tonight. Very important indeed. Frederick, I don't know what it is, but there's a mysterious appeal about you. And, since I met you, my way of thinking has changed quite a bit. Although I didn't realize it before, I think I've been dwelling on the past and ignoring the future. Because thinking about the future is just too painful. 
when you know you're going to die soon. But you told me when we met that this whole world existed inside your dream, right? At first, I thought you were teasing me by saying that this was your dream. But now, I actually think that it's a really beautiful idea. And now I realize that by believing in you, it's the same as believing in the future. It's especially true for someone like me. Someone who can use magic. Knowing you helps me be more positive about the future and what I need to do. I'm the one who should be thanking you, Frederick. You've taught me something very important, too. Damn it! Of all the times for this to happen! That's a big ship! Well, what is it? It's a pirate ship. They appear out of nowhere sometimes and attack vessels that travel up this river. The pirates sneak up from behind and ram their unsuspecting target. That's terrible! Maybe there's something we can do. We should repay them for helping us. I agree. But whatever we do, we have to move quickly or those people will try to board this ship. It's far too dangerous. These pirates, even their underlings, are very strong. Hey, that's no way for our captain to talk. Don't worry about a thing. Just leave it to us. What's all the fuss? Is something happening? I'm still really sleepy. That's it! That's it! Ha! You know they got a captain with an eye patch and a hook! Ooh, and I'll bet they have a lot of treasure. Hey, wait! B, don't! Oh, not you two! All right. We'll go over and keep them occupied. Meanwhile, try to pull the ship away as far as you can to keep them from boarding. Uh, right. I'll do everything I can. Well then, if you'll excuse me.
Are you all right? What the? What's this thing? It looks like some kind of weird rock or something. Hey, Polka, why are you carrying around this weird stone? To be honest with you, I don't even remember how long I've had that stone. According to my mother, I was already carrying it around with me when I was just four years old. She would tell me to throw it away, but I wouldn't listen to her. Apparently, I said it was a gift from someone I love, and I would never throw it away, no matter what. Huh? You had a boyfriend when you were four? Wow, you were really precocious, weren't you? I don't know why, but for some reason this stone feels very important to me, and I've never been able to throw it away. The distant memories of a fleeting love. Oh, it's so incredibly romantic. All right, enough about that. Let's get going. That should 
Now you will sleep. Creatures. Now you 
you sleep. Rock! Rock! That'll cost you! Yo -ho -ho! Orange glow! Orange glow! There is no way for you to stop my relentless advance. How pitiful, you soulless creatures! That's right! Yo, ball! Tight, yo! Ball! Ball! You grab it! Ball! 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 Ball, 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 ball,
spirit's pathway. Creatures.
You rob it! Now you will rest. Orange glow! Oh, it's Orange nothing. glow! Oh, it's Perfect. nothing! Yes, so it would seem. Amazing. We've actually managed to find the pirate's treasure. You see? It's just like I told you. I knew we'd find it. But wait, is it really okay for us to take it? I mean, this is an awful lot of treasure. I feel kind of guilty taking so much. Come on, you'll never become a big shot if you say silly things like that. Taking this much treasure is no big deal at all. I'm quite sure these items were all stolen in the first place, so I doubt anyone will complain. Yeah, exactly. With a huge pile of treasure like this in front of you, nobody'd be interested in any of this other junk. Except her. Oh, poor Beat. I guess now you go back to being the short one again. Now then, I think it's time for us to be heading back. We should hurry and let Captain Crescendo know everything that's happened. That's fine with me. But before we do that, as luck would have it, there just happens to be a full-length mirror right here. 
beat. Go stand in front of it for a minute, will ya? just remembered something I wish I hadn't. Hmm? What's wrong? Did something happen? No, uh, it's nothing. Never mind. All right, I'm going back inside now. You should come in soon too, okay? It's probably gonna start any minute now. It was wonderful. Everyone danced so beautifully. I wish I could dance like that. Yeah, and wow, I never knew Frederick was that good either. Huh? Good at what? At the piano, of course. Weren't you watching? Didn't you see him playing? The way he played was just so amazing. Way better than any piano player I've ever heard before. It was almost like he was a real professional pianist. What? Are you saying Frederick was playing that music? I was watching the people dancing the whole time. I didn't pay any attention to who was playing the music. Hey, you guys! We have to go see the captain. Hurry! See the captain? You two need to stop calling him the captain. You should call him Prince Crescendo, for he is the Prince of Baroque. I'll bet the captain's going to have a face prepared to thank Frederick for playing the piano. It isn't fair if they get a head start. Oh, so Frederick has already gone to join Prince Crescendo? Yeah, and if we don't hurry up, they'll eat all the food. I wonder if they're going to feed us something really good. Come on, let's go. I don't want to miss out on that. Mr. Chopin, thank you for your stellar performance. Allow me to introduce my fiance. This is Serenade, and the little one with her is Minuet. Hello. I am very pleased to make your acquaintance. Hey, what's going on here, Salsa? They're just talking about boring stuff. I don't see food anywhere. Well, I just thought they were probably going to eat all the good stuff before we could get here. There is something I wanted to tell all of you, about the position Baroque is in right now. 
Count Waltz is using mineral powder to convert his population into soldiers who fear nothing, not even death, to create an unstoppable army. As soon as his preparations are complete, it is almost certain that he and his armies will invade Baroque. However, if Baroque were to preemptively challenge Forte, many innocent civilians would surely get caught up in the resulting all-out war. The suffering of innocence is one of the greatest tragedies of war. It's appalling. So, what are you gonna do now? Well, I thought that the solution to the problem would be to find a way to assassinate Count Waltz to avoid any other casualties. So I aided on Dantino. But you see, I am opposed to that plan. I believe assassination would be the equivalent of a declaration of war against Forte. And if we were to do that, would it not be the same kind of evil for which Count Waltz is responsible? History always repeats itself. Even if we managed to succeed in assassinating Count Waltz, another Count Waltz would appear, then another. The problem itself would still remain. If we throw all our support behind a band of rebels, I believe it will be Baroque that is disgraced in the end. I see. And you're correct. Looking back on history, mankind does indeed repeat the same mistakes, over and over again. Someone else with evil designs will surely appear to fill the void. If it's really as important as all that, how can people just forget about it? It's because the passage of time allows us to forget tragic and painful events. We let them go so that we're able to continue on with our lives. Like letters written in sand and then blown away by the wind, they're all forgotten. But there are some things we must never forget, no matter what. Tragic memories that we have to carve firmly in stone so that the wind can never blow them away. I have a favor to ask. I understand that all of you are acquainted with Jazz? There is a message I would like you to pass on to him. It is this. Baroque can no longer provide you with any assistance. No matter how much of a tyrant Count Waltz may be, we cannot be absolutely certain that he's ever going to attack us. To attack him first would be a classic example of man's suspicious nature leading to war. Serenade, I know in my heart that everything you've said is correct. That's why I wanted... What is it, Captain? Never mind. We must achieve true peace, not simply the appearance of it. But, because of the current situation with Forte, there is no way I can leave Baroque at the present time. Besides, if I were to be seen making contact with Andantino, that very thing alone could act as a trigger for war. Could you perhaps meet with Jazz and tell him for me that this struggle itself is the very thing that's leading the world into chaos. What do you mean, exactly? You would like us to inform Andantino that Baroque can no longer provide support for its actions. Is that correct? I'm sorry to have to ask you to do this. Oh, is that all? Deliver a message? <laughs> that's nothing. Reto and the others are probably already looking for us anyway. If we can make our way back to Retardando somehow, I'm sure we'll be able to find Jazz. No problem. That's true, Beat. We certainly can't just stay here like this forever. Besides, I'm sure my mom is worried about me, too. It's a little far, but I think we should go back to Forte. All right, then. Let's return to Retardando for now. If Allegretto and the others are all right, 
I'm certain that they'll be on their way there as well. Hmm, I wonder if Marsh is holding out okay. She's totally hopeless without me around. So, what should we do? It looks like we'll have to cross over that mountain. It'll be pretty difficult with all the snow, but Red Ordondo is in that direction. Well, let's go! I'll bet Redo's at the hideout right now wondering when we're gonna show up. No way do I want to get lost in those cold mountains. Oh, I really wish I was back in a go-go forest. Indeed. Let's be certain we're well prepared before setting out on this journey.
How pitiful, you soulless creatures! How pitiful, you soulless creatures!
How pitiful. You soulless creatures. for a while in this little lodge. Huh? Who in the world would be flying a kite all the way up here on top of a mountain? Hmm? That's not a kite, it's a dove. But I'm surprised to see one flying over a cold, snowy mountain like this. It's strange. Who cares about a bird at a time like this? Let's just go inside already. So Clabase became enamored with him, even though she knew she couldn't escape her deception, and that he'd eventually learn she was a spy. Oh well, once we have an endless supply of insane soldiers, there'll be no need to spy on Andantino. What about the one in Baroque? You mean Serenade? No, she's very dependable. And besides, her interests coincide with mine. What do you mean? Forte would be in a difficult position if we were to be attacked before we finished developing a more powerful mineral powder. Even when Serenade marries into Baroque, she is still a princess of Forte. She's the perfect person to prevent Baroque from starting a war with us. She won't let them follow a path that could harm Forte. More importantly, Fugue should be searching a go-go forest for glowing a go-go's. I want you to go there as well. And if he's slacking off, give him some encouragement. Yes. Ah, it's so warm in here. Hmm. 
There's something familiar about this place. It reminds me of my home in Tenudo. Ah, what's going on? Well, you see, each and every one of us has a jewel inside our hearts. A jewel? That's right. And that jewel is called an astra. For some people, it glows very brightly, but for others, not as much. Nevertheless, everyone has one. I wonder how much your astra is glowing. Um, well, there were some cookies I ate without asking you, so... Maybe mine's not glowing. I'm sorry. Ah, so it was you that ate them. But you told me the truth, so it's all right. I'm sure that your aster is still glowing. I don't know. I'm kind of worried. Hey, Mommy, do I still have time? If I do a whole bunch of good things, will it glow even more? Of course it will. Then I'll start tomorrow. Oh, you won't start today? Oh, Polka, your Astra is glowing, but it's glowing far too brightly for this world. It's glowing so brightly that it is unconsciously leading you toward a deep darkness, one that must be illuminated. And then someday, the time will come when the abyss of the sea will open up before you. Oh, I wish, how I wish you weren't the only person who could bring light to that dark ocean floor. If only there was someone else who could take your place, then it really wouldn't matter if your light ever dimmed. Polka, what's the matter with you? Hey, are you feeling all right? Uh, it's nothing. I just felt dizzy for a minute. That's all. Well, the mountain air up here is very thin. Perhaps that was what caused your dizziness. Thin air, huh? Now that you mention it, my head has been hurting too. I guess it's just time for us to take a break. My legs are all worn out from all that climbing anyway. I agree. Let's try and get a little rest before we continue on, all right? I'm being led toward a darkness that must be illuminated? The abyss of the sea will open before me? What does it all mean? like summer all of a sudden. And it was so cold just a little while ago. If the weather keeps changing back and forth like this, we're all gonna end up getting sick. There seem to be pools of magma around here. Let's all be very careful passing through this place.
let me by, okay? Now you will rest. Now you will rest. for you to stop my relentless advance. You foolish creatures! In my melodies. Listen. Listen. Pew Grave. Now you will rest.
Ready! There is power within my melodies. Listen. Pew Grave. Now you will rest. How pitiful. Soulless creatures.
is a go-go village. I was just walking along and then boom! We just popped out of the woods right next to it. I must be a genius if I do say so myself. Huh? Hey, isn't that your sister, March? You're right, it is! Hey! <gasps> Salsa, welcome home! I'm glad to see you're okay. I know you're totally hopeless without me around, so I was a little worried about you. But goodness, I sure ran into a lot of trouble on this trip. First, I was thrown in a scary dungeon, and then I climbed a frozen mountain. I'm telling you, it was a spectacle! A truly astoundingly big adventure! Uh, um, Salsa? More importantly, you should probably take a look at that. What is it? What could possibly be more important than the story of my trip? Oh my goodness! The Agogos are glowing! In all the time I've lived here, I've never seen anything like that. It seems like something really has them all worked up. This time I've got to take a picture of them. I think they're trying to tell us something. Just look at how excited they are. I came to find out the secret of the glowing Agogos, but I never expected to find the place where they lived. I suppose luck is on my side today. Now that I think about it, I never did check around here before. You again. Frederick, do you know who this person is? He attacked us for no reason at all in a go-go forest. Did I really? I'm afraid I do tend to forget unimportant little details like that. But I have to tell you, today is not only my lucky day, it's all of yours as well. I had intended to take you all to Forte Castle. There you would have been made to suffer until you revealed the secret location of the glowing Agogos. But now that I know where they live, well, there's simply no need for extended torture. I'll just put you out of your misery right now. After all, we really have no need for you anymore. I'll allow all of you to comfort each other, since this is the end of your pathetic lives. I'll be perfectly polite when I send you flying. Let's see! <laughs> Pitiful. Forget the pain you felt in the dream. Earth heal! Descend from heaven and shatter the earth! Deadly open! That's right, worship! Shaku! <laughs> I can hear Descend from heaven and shatter the earth! Deadly That's right, worship me! You grave! Now you will rest. Ah. 
Jakku! I can hear the... <laughs> That's right, worship me! Another wave! You peasants could never appreciate the beauty of this kind. Jaku! I... Let's go! <laughs> I just cleaned up a teeny tiny bit. <laughs> That's more like it. Is everybody okay? Yeah, but that was a pretty tough one. Hey, Polka, you're not hurt or anything, are you? I'm all right. Thank you. Huh. <laughs> so much for fugue. Now, as for that young girl, the Agogos only seem to glow when they're around her. Why? And who is she? <laughs> well, in that case, it's no wonder we couldn't find them all this time. It turns out where they live isn't important. I think I'm starting to better understand the so-called mystery of the glowing Agogos. It must be the girl. She's the key to everything. Don't hold it against me, Fugue, but it looks like I'm going to get credit for this one. So, what did that guy want, anyway? I believe he mentioned something about the secret of the Agogos. I wonder what he meant. It sounded as though he was trying to find where the glowing Agogos come from. Well, we managed to take care of him, but who knows whether or not somebody else will be coming next. I'm kind of worried about March, so I think I'm going to keep an eye on things here for a while. All right. Then I'm going back to Tenuto, since I really think I should check in on my mom. In that case, maybe we should pick a time to meet up again later, in Tenuto. I'm gonna head back to the hideout in Retardondo. You never know, Reto might already be back there by now. That's true. Then perhaps I'll go with you, Beat. I must find Jazz, and he's much more likely to be heading for Retardando. Goodness, the Agogos really are glowing like crazy. I've lived in this forest all my life, but this is the first time I've ever seen them do that. You know, it kind of looks like they're only glowing in the area around us, doesn't it? Look, a dove is sitting on the windowsill. That's unusual. I'm surprised a dove would even be out flying in this snow. What is that? There appears to be something on the poor thing's leg. I wonder what it is. Is something the matter? Uh, no. But 
Why? What does this mean? Jazz will never forget, and he won't ever be able to get over you! Well, it sure took you long enough. Riddle! What a relief. I'm glad to see that you all got back here safely. it, Reto? Did someone get hurt or something on your way here? Actually... Wow, so that's what happened. I can hardly believe it. Poor Claves. She must have been deeply troubled by what she was doing for a long, long time. Anyway, after that, Jazz headed for Baroque Castle. He said he needed to talk to someone that he knows there. But whether or not it has anything to do with what happened to Claves? I just don't know. What about the others? Where are they? Viola went home to set her goats free. After that, she's gonna head for Salsa's house. We weren't sure, but we thought you might all head for Salsa's place first. And what about Falsetto? Where's she? She's... Ever since she learned about Clavace's death, we sort of haven't been able to find her anywhere. She's gone missing? Yeah, we looked for her all over the place, but she was just nowhere to be found. Who knows, maybe she felt like she's somehow responsible for Clavace's death for some reason. Poor Falsetto. Well, there's no point worrying when there's nothing we can do. And we've still got some time before Viola arrives. Let's take a walk around Retardando. It's been a while.
going on? Why are all these people here? Huh? Did something happen? Someone said they heard a strange voice coming from underneath the church. What? Underneath it? Does the church have a basement? Retardando used to get attacked by pirates all the time. They built an underground shelter so they'd have some place to hide in case it happened. Oh, I see. This church is on high ground, and it's quite far from the shore. That makes it an ideal spot for that kind of shelter. Oh, how creepy! The shelter must be infested with some sort of strange creatures! After all, it hasn't been used in ages! No, I'm sure it must be ghosts. The souls of the people who were killed by the pirates have come back to haunt this place. <laughs> Just kidding. Ah, uh, yeah right, give me a break already. I'm sure it's no big deal. It's probably just some rats scratching around or something. Hey! It's you two! Huh? Uh-oh! I know them! These are the brats who've been stealing my bread! What? You're a couple of petty thieves? No, wait! There was a reason we were... Perfect! You have experience with this kind of thing, then! Go investigate that noise! I agree with her! That's right! Since you've done nothing but go around causing trouble for this city, you need to make up for it somehow! You're used to dangerous jobs like this. This doesn't look good. No, Reddle, it'll be okay. Let's just agree to do it. We can always come up with some way out of it later. Yeah, you're right. That's a good idea. Well, what's it gonna be? All right, all right, calm down. We'll check it out. Just hold on for one minute. It's a good thing Polka's not here, huh? She'd have definitely found out about all the bad things we've been doing. Ow! There you are, Allegretto! How are you doing? Hey, Salsa. You sound the same as always. When I asked Salsa where everyone was, she said that you were all heading for Retardando. So we came to join you. But then, how'd you know that we were in here? Easy. We saw you just as you were going inside. Well, in that case, perhaps you could all help us out a little bit help you? With what? What are you guys trying to do? We're supposed to get rid of the ghosts underneath this place. Hm, it's pretty stupid. What? Ghosts? But ghosts are scary! I really hate ghosts! Ah, so that's why there were so many people standing around outside the church. I'll see you guys later then. Thanks! Huh? Where are you going now, Riddle? Well, with this many talented people helping out, you don't really need me, do you? That's not fair, Riddle. You can't push all the work on us and then just leave. Ah, I know what it is. He's scared of ghosts, so he's running away. Yep, that's right. I've been keeping it a secret, but I'm actually completely terrified of ghosts. See ya, Beat. And hey, good luck. Hey, wait! Excuse me, Allegretto, but what are you going to do now? Once you guys finish up here, we'll be getting on the first ship headed for Baroque tomorrow morning. They opened up the shipping lanes now that the pirates have stopped attacking ships. And as for right now, I'm gonna go get Polka. That way, tomorrow morning, we can all meet up in the harbor. Don't be late. See ya! Hey, that's so not fair!
I don't care whether it's ghosts or something else. I don't have time to waste on stuff like that. Okay, it's time to go and get Polka. have here? Oh, it's just a rock. It has a really weird shape to it, though. I guess it must have washed up on shore. I'm not much of a rock collector, but it really is strange looking. Hmm, maybe I'll show it off to Salsa later. Well, I'd better hurry up or it's gonna get dark. Stupid riddle. Let's just concentrate on what we need to do and get going. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's get this over with. Oh, by the way, are you planning on joining our Endeavor March? Yes, I'll do my best not to get in the way. I hope that's all right. Bringing her along with us is much safer than leaving her in a go-go forest alone. Well, it's good to have you along. At least you're a lot more reliable than Reto. I can't believe he took off and left the work to us. Who knows? Maybe he really was scared of ghosts. <laughs> Dare to turn your sword to me?
dare to bear your fangs? <laughs> Listen, pure grave. Now you will rest. Well, now that kind of hurt. Dare to turn your sword to me? That's right, worship me. Now you will rest. because they're afraid of us. So the key person we sought wasn't the guardian of a go, go forest. And to think we almost killed that girl. We're lucky that Fugue and Tuba were so incompetent at their assignments. Or maybe I should say they performed their jobs perfectly. The Agogos only glowed when they were around that girl. If we are to get a hold of them, we'll need to find some way to lure the girl to us. Hmm... In any case, it appears she can use magic, which means that she doesn't have very much time left to live. Rondo, I want you to bring her to me. And you had better do it before she dies. Understood. Locating the trail of one little girl should not be too difficult if I ask in retardando. Don't get mad at me. 
at me. on you like a mountain range. on weaklings really isn't my style. <laughs> Or Zambiali! 
will get the... Looks like that's our ghost. So this is what's been living down here. What? That's it? If it's not a ghost, then it's no problem at all. Forget the pain you felt in the dream. That's right, worship me. Heal arrow! Oh, it's no. Bullseye!
Or sell Bioli! Forget the pain you felt in the dream. the others oh they're all just fine I left them with a really important job to do back in retardando we're heading for Baroque on the first ship tomorrow morning that. I remember the night view being much more beautiful when I was little, though there weren't as many lights then as there are now. Well, yeah. In a way, every single light back then was much more innocent. Nowadays, if you see anything glowing out there, it's usually just the fires of mistrust burning brightly inside people's hearts. Fires of mistrust? Yeah, sure. Human beings live their lives always being suspicious of the people around them. I guess it's just about the only way they can be sure that their own hearts are actually inside their bodies. The only way they can prove they even have hearts. That rumor about catching a disease if you touch somebody with magic is a perfect example. Mistrust is the norm. And the people who lose everything from caring too much, the world calls them idiots. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. What a sad world we live in. That everyone feels they have to put so much energy into maintaining their feelings of mistrust. If only everyone in the world could learn to use that energy for other things, if they could. I'll bet that then, we'd be able to live lives that were filled with light. You don't always notice what's wrong when you're on the inside of a problem. I wasn't able to see everything that was wrong until I left Retardando. When the suspicion in your heart gets too strong, I think you can lose sight of the things around you that are really important. You're right, Allegretto. It's the same as this. Because the lights of the city are so bright, we can't see the beautiful stars shining in the night sky.
Maybe I should just jump off this cliff right now. Then maybe a new life would be waiting for me. A life without sickness and fear. No! Wait, Polka, don't! What's the matter, Allegretto? You look so shaken. Did you think I'd really jump off? Even if I don't have long to live, I'm not going to do something as stupid as that. But thank you anyway for wanting to stop me from doing it. Polka, I... All right. How about I have my special rock make the jump for me? It can go in my place. Please, let it go all the way to the sea. <sighs> what did you throw? My special treasure. It's just an unusually shaped rock, but it's the perfect thing to take my place. Don't you agree? Oh, it was just a rock? That was your treasure? Actually, that reminds me. I found a rock with a weird shape today at the shore by Retardando. Here. Huh? Keep it. Hold on to this one in place of the one you threw away. Besides, I'm sure this one is much more unusual. Look how weird the shape is. But, um, don't throw this one away, okay? After all, it's the first gift I've ever given to a girl. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow morning in the harbor. Don't be late getting to the ship. What does this mean? Could it really just be a coincidence? I can't believe there are two rocks like this with the same strange shape. No, this is definitely the exact same one. It's been mine forever. There's no way I could be wrong about it. The weight, the feel, everything is identical. But that means that Allegretto somehow picked it up on the beach, before I threw it away. That rock wasn't my treasure because it was unusual. It was my treasure because I received it from someone I love. And now, Allegretto's given me a rock that has the exact same shape. Does that mean... A treasure that I received from someone I loved. A treasure that was from Allegretto. Oh, forget this. I'm in last place again. What are you talking about, Viola? That's not true. You're in third place. He's right, you know. Third place is a bronze medal. Not bad at all. Hey, are you two trying to make me angry? I'm in third place out of three players. You can't tell me that deserves a bronze medal. No, we didn't mean it like that. Sosa, come on. Say something to her. Yeah, Beat's right. Without you, old lady, we wouldn't... What? Hey! Oh, oops. Without you playing sweet and kind Lady Viola, the game wouldn't be any fun at all. Hmm. 
Since when do you two get along so well with each other? Well, whatever. Anyway, I'll play again later if I'm in the mood. Great. Nice job, Salsa. You could have at least let Viola beat you a couple of times. Now she got mad and left. What about you? You could have lost a few, too. If she keeps getting bronze medals the whole time, the old lady might decide not to play with us. <sighs> it's already been a whole week since we arrived in Baroque. I'm so bored. What in the world could Jazz and the Captain possibly be talking about anyway? You can say that again. I'm tired of sitting around. After Waltz makes his move, it'll be too late to do anything. Dozens of people have already lost their lives to the mineral powder. If we don't eliminate the source of the powder, we can never hope to resolve this. War is simply a battle of egos. A desire to surpass your adversary. I'm afraid that as long as both sides feel that way, this clash will continue indefinitely. It's not worth it. By placing so much effort into this never-ending battle, we lose sight of other things that matter more. Ultimately, whatever the real issue was is forgotten and replaced by this challenge. This battle for power. You may still think you are fighting against your opponent. But at some point, it's no longer about who wins or loses. It's a power struggle. A childish fight between adults who should know better. It's just embarrassing. Sir, when you eliminate all other possibilities, you cannot escape the truth that remains, no matter how difficult it may be to accept. I let myself believe in something that wasn't true, that Claves wasn't a spy for Forte. Looking back, I let myself believe what I wanted to be true without realizing it. I know that my weakness was the very thing that led to her death. Perhaps, in a way, I was trying to make up for not being able to believe in myself by believing in Claves. Are you any different? Prince Crescendo, I don't want to watch you make the same mistake that I did. I already know. Huh? I realized it a long time ago. That a Forte spy had infiltrated my inner circle and was hiding very close to me. What? A spy? Who is it? Jazz, my friend. Could you please give me some time alone to think? I want to find the best answer. Serenade. It doesn't matter to me whose side you're really on. In fact, if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that the things you've said are absolutely true. I always knew that you were connected to Count Waltz. I assumed you were assigned the role of preventing Baroque, and me, from attacking Forte first. An attack from Baroque would be a problem for Forte, so Count Waltz sent you to me as insurance. 
But from a different perspective, it also means that right now we have the power to defeat Forte. The more you rejected the notion of war, the more my suspicions were confirmed. But I know you, Serenade, and I understand that this is not the real reason why you oppose this war. There are absolutely no arguments that I can use against you. Once I realized that, I could no longer see aiding Andantino as a just course of action. No. A rebellion no longer serves us any purpose. To avert this war, we have to find a new solution. Well, wouldn't you agree, Serenade? Hey, Polka. Do you believe in good luck charms? Yes, I tend to take them too seriously. Okay, then I'll teach you a good one. Hold your fingers out like this. Like this? Yeah, this charm works really well, and it's easy to do, too. Great, what do I do? Just hold your hand like this, in front of the person that you love. If you do that, the charm's supposed to make them fall in love with you, too. Easy, huh? That's it? Really? Really. And you can see the results right away. Hey, how about giving it a try next time you see Allegretto? Oh, Viola, please. Don't tease me like that. Well, Jazz, is your meeting thing finally over? Not yet. It's an important decision. I don't think it's something he can decide on quite that easily. He's going to think about it alone. It seems like it's going to take him a little while. So, let's spend the day exploring Baroque Castle tomorrow, all right? By the way, I don't think I've ever heard of that charm before. Well, yeah. Of course you haven't heard of it. Something I thought up just now. Maybe I should patent it. Don't joke around with her too much, Viola. Don't worry about it. Of course the charm won't work. I was just trying to give her a little courage. Watching those two together is making me crazy. Well, don't go overboard. I'm the one who really needs courage. What about you? What? Do you have someone special like that too, Viola? Don't be silly. Of course I do. He's with me all the time. Argo, come here! Claves. Then falsetto. <sighs> well, looks like I'm third out of three players. I'm the bronze medal winner again. Hey, 
Viola. Are you here because you want to play some more? Wow, this is certainly a surprise. Yeah, I figured you'd got mad and left, Viola. You know, because you kept losing to us all the time. Nah, it's okay. I kind of realized something. Bronze medals suit me. Besides, today's the last day we'll be able to relax. Jazz just told me. We're heading out tomorrow. Now, hurry up and deal the cards. Whoa, she's scaring me. Me too. Maybe she's got some kind of super secret strategy worked out. I'm starting to get nervous. You know, guys, bronze medals aren't that bad after all. They're kind of nice. Huh? Hmm? Prince Crescendo is going to spend some time alone and decide what Baroque is going to do. It's going to take a little longer for him to reach a decision than we thought. So, in the meantime, why don't we take a walk around Baroque?
You better pull your head in. So, how about we go around? Take that! Phantom Wave! Your end is near. on weaklings really isn't my style.
everyone. I think I saw someone go in that door just now. Really? Where? I didn't see anyone going anywhere, Polka. Yeah, I really doubt that there's anyone around here. Are you sure? Oh, I could have sworn. It looked like it was a woman. Take all day! What? Let's get started.
Let's see how good you really are. Wash yourself up. I'm gonna come down on you like a mountain range. Just a dead end. See? I told you you were just seeing things. But I'm sure I saw someone. She was right there, going in the entrance. Incredible. Here you all are. You really did come to Baroque. <laughs> Looks like what I learned in Retardando was true after all. Hey, she was right. There really is someone here besides us. Yeah, I guess this is who Polka saw at the entrance earlier. I, I don't know. She doesn't seem like the same person to me. Listen carefully. I have business with that girl. 
If you all do precisely as I say, I won't harm the rest of you. Understand? Don't make a move! Hi, guys. I'm sorry I worried all of you. It's just that I realize that I'll never be able to compete with Claves now. No matter how fast I run, I can never catch up. I'll only just become more and more bitter, and she'll always have a smile on her face. That was all I could think about. And before I knew it, I had run away. But now, I may have this one chance to catch up! One way. One possible way of standing on equal footing with Claves. Even now, after she's gone on to the Great Unknown. And the way I can do it is by defeating you! I am not... going to run anymore! Not bad. I'm so impressed you were able to figure out I was the one who killed her. Perhaps we should have had you ferret out information about Andantino. Actually, it's not too late. What do you think? Would you like to take the place of Claves? You could work with us. Think about it. Andantino's leader is about to die. No one will ever find out that you're a spy. <laughs> Despicable people like you, that tragedies like what happened to Claves occur in the first place. It's unforgivable. The way people like you can use and discard feelings without so much as a second thought! And now you're gonna pay for it! Sheep of flock together. No matter what, I will never lose to you. Chew on that! 
Jazz. Let's go see Prince Crescendo. It's been long enough. He has to have an answer by now.
He's gone. Where did he go? I don't know. Maybe he's in the princess's room. Yes, sir. Thank goodness. We've looked, but we can't find Prince Crescendo or Princess Serenade anywhere. What do you mean? It's true. No one in the castle has seen them. They've got to be somewhere. Let's try searching again. No. Looking here is probably useless. Do you think they... Yes. I believe they're already heading for Forte. They're going to try and save Baroque by sacrificing themselves. You're sure you want to come? Yes. I feel I must. For I am in part responsible for starting the conflict with Forte. If only I had realized sooner. If I surrender unconditionally to Forte, it should be safe for you to stay in Baroque. Once I offer myself directly to Forte, that should satisfy them. They most likely won't make any attempt to invade Baroque. But you still insist? I will speak with Count Waltz. Right now, I'm the only one who can possibly save your life. I at least have to try. Thank you, Serenade. However, I expect the result will be the same. You will just delay the inevitable. No, I doubt I'll ever be able to return here. This parting will be... forever. Farewell, Baroque. Prince Crescendo and Princess Serenade are trying to end the conflict between the two territories by surrendering and becoming prisoners. Knowing they can never return to Baroque. Jazz, sir. Please take this key. With it, you can enter a small building next to the Baroque Castle gate. In all likelihood, they have gone through there to the Tukota ruins and are heading for Forte. If they make it to Forte, they have no chance. Count Waltz isn't very sympathetic. Let's go!
I'm not going to let you get in our way! Chew on that! Take that! I'm not gonna lose! Ha-ha! <laughs> Alright! I'm not going to let you get in our way! Chew on that! Good, huh? Who are you? You better back off! Chew on that! Phantom Wave! Your end is near! Not a challenge at all. Isn't good. No. Chew on that. Your end is near.
Let's go! Chew on that! What did you think? That's better. Who are you? You better back off. Chew on that. Good you really are. Let's go! Show me what you've got!
Let's go! Chew on that! Well, what did you expect? All right, let's go! Chew on that! Take that! Phantom Wave! Your end is near! On that. Don't get mad at me. So, how about we go around? Chew on that! Phantom Wave! Phantom Wave! Your end is near. Much to you, huh?
Olga, my dear, I knew you would be coming sooner or later. Huh? H how do you know my name? It's certainly been a long time, hasn't it? I can't quite remember how many years has it been since last I saw you. It feels like it could have been only yesterday, but I suppose it also could have been hundreds of years ago. You know her? No, I don't. I'm sorry, have we met somewhere before? Not somewhere, my dear. We've met before right here in this very place. Because you're the only person who can draw a fortune here. We met here? But this is the first time I've ever been to this place. Excuse me, but how is it that you know about me? My dear, I'm afraid you wouldn't understand even if I explained it to you. And even if you knew everything, you cannot change fate now. And because you've arrived here right on time, I guess that means you didn't have any particular trouble this time either. Uh, ma'am, what are you doing here anyway? Don't tell me it's your job to just wait here for Polka to show up. First, you are going to draw the fortune of bad luck. Huh? Wait, does that mean you know what she's going to draw? Yes, I know very well. You see, my job is to witness whether or not she ties that fortune to the sacred tree. The sacred tree? The tree standing right behind this fortune-telling hut. Its real name is the Cello Tree. It has stood on this land for thousands and thousands of years. For the tree, it's as if time is standing still, for it never grows any bigger, and it also never withers. And that is why the people who live in this land have come to call it the Sacred Tree. They think it's blessed because it doesn't age. Now, Polka, go ahead, draw your fortune. You will soon know whether what I have told you is the truth or not. What do you think? Are you gonna do it? This whole thing is kinda weird. I'll do it. I'll draw one. There's no way she could know what I'm going to draw before I do it. It just doesn't make any sense. It's because you don't know what you're going to get before you draw that you can have hope for the future. Now then, my dear, go over to the sacred tree, and if it is indeed a bad fortune, you should tie it to one of the branches of the tree. By doing that, you will drive away the bad luck.
Oh no. All of them are bad luck. Who in the world is that old woman? Well, Polka, how'd it go? Where did she go? Huh? Hey, yeah, she was here just a minute ago. Oh. Hey! Old lady! Where'd you go? Beat, I don't think she's gonna come even if you shout. She doesn't have a reason to be here anymore. Anyway, what was your fortune? was just as she predicted. Really? Oh. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. It's just a scrap of paper after all. Come on. Why don't we all get going? There's no reason for us to stay here any longer.
You better pull your head in. Chew on that! Well, what did you expect? Maybe it's time to upgrade. Don't get cocky. You're going down. Are you catching on yet? What did you think? Much better. I'm not going to let you get in our way. <laughs> Chew on that! Who are you? You better back off! Heal Arrow! Think Heal Arrow! Bullseye! Starlight Blast! Did your stomach drop? Knife <laughs> 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 
All right, let's go. Chew on that. by the hatred and envy of the dead. Phantom Wave! Your end is near. Did 
Did your stomach drop? You get in our way. After we get over this ridge, the rest of the way will all be downhill. Yes, we're almost in Forte territory. From this point on, we should be especially careful not to reveal who we are. Hey, guys!
What? Well, you caught up with us sooner than I would have expected. I thought that we would at least make it to Forte first. Oh, I'm glad that we made it in time. What do you think you're doing? Why in the world did you follow us? Princess, how could you leave without telling anyone in Baroque Castle? Everyone is really worried about you. We will... Baroque will surrender unconditionally. If I turn myself directly over to Waltz, I'll make him understand that I am serious. You just die in vain. Waltz is not that sympathetic. Maybe not, but if I were to speak with him, I believe he would spare the Prince. Even if I sacrifice my own life in the process. After all the things that I have done, it is the very least I can do to make up for it. And then Waltz will invade, after Baroque is thrown into chaos from the loss of its Prince. Anyone can see that's what's gonna happen. Yes, that's right. If you abandon Baroque now, then... Huh? What's that? They're already invading? so many of them damn it all of you can stand by in the skies overhead legato we're descending yes my lord look they're coming this way even if we battled a force of that size we'd have no chance of defeating them and after they've killed us, they'll just continue on to invade Baroque. What can we do, Jazz? All we can do is pretend to listen to their demands. That may buy us some time. It would have been terribly rude of me to make you come all the way to Forte. So I thought I'd come to meet you halfway. Count Waltz, as leader of Baroque, I surrender to you unconditionally. I do not want to make the people of my kingdom suffer under the fear of war any longer. You seem to be a noble prince who cares about his subjects. However, I'm afraid I cannot give you a response without some kind of guarantee. That I am standing here in front of you is proof of my word. I am turning myself over to Forte. And in exchange, I ask that you not harm in any way Serenade or these people here as well as the citizens of Baroque. Capturing me should satisfy your goals. Count Waltz, hear me. All this time I have kept a close watch to make sure that Baroque made no move. That they never invaded Forte. I carefully monitored everything there to make sure they never took action. And I was fully aware that by doing this, I was choosing to give my support to you and to Forte. But even so, through it all, I was following the path that I believed to be right. 
However, I realized I was mistaken in my actions. It is true that no move has been made to go forward, but by just staying in the same place, none of the problems we face can ever be resolved. I came to realize that one side would need to take a step back in order for things to change. And so you're saying that Baroque has taken a step back? Yes, that is correct. The fact that we are standing here now, at your mercy, is surely proof of that. It requires much more courage to take a step back than it does to take a step forward, would you not agree? After all, there is no guarantee that there will be ground to stand upon. Please, do not make our courage meaningless. Join hands with Baroque, and let us walk forward together in peace. It should be clear as the light of day to all concerned that continuing with this mutual animosity will benefit absolutely no one in the end. But to us, any threat posed by Baroque is no longer a concern at all. And I have even less interest in Baroque's weakling prince. What we are interested in right now is that girl. So if you turn that girl over to us, I will guarantee the safety of Prince Crescendo and Serenade. And of course, we promise to treat the young lady with the utmost care and civility. Don't think for a minute that I'm gonna fall for that kind of sweet talk again. It is very important to us that this young lady remain in only the best of health. We have no intention of making a prisoner of her. We will make sure she lives the rest of her life in comfort. You see, we all want the same thing. So, what will you do? It's okay. Don't worry about me. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. I made a decision when I left Tenuto. I wanted to spend the remainder of my life doing things that help people. That's the whole point of my journey. What a good girl you are. I wish there were more like you. No, Polka, don't do it! Don't go with them! Damn it! Calm down, young man. Try to refrain from doing anything foolish. Or do you intend to just throw away this historic peace that has finally been achieved? Please step right this way. Well? It's confirmed, my lord. Hey! What's with that light?
my lord, it is just as you surmised. Legato, take the girl and get out of here, but do be careful with her. <laughs> Polka! <sighs> well now, I have no real use for any of these others, so I'll just play with you for a little amusement! <laughs> No 
problem. Maybe it's time to upgrade. Not bad. Ha-ha! <laughs> All right! Looks like the old guy's the only one left. Uh, oh well. Uh, I suppose I have no other choice. Is everyone okay? Huh? What's that hole? Did did that old guy open up this hole somehow? Where are we? His power was so immense he actually managed to rip a hole in space.
can't just leave things like this. Come on, we'd better go and find him. I'm not going to let you get in our way. Knife it! Chew on that! Phantom way! Your end is near. Your end is near. That was perfect.
Who are you? You better back off. Chew on that. Your end is near.
You better pull your head in. Are you catching on yet? Heal arrow! Bullseye! Starlight Blast! That was a good fight! Alright! Are you catching on yet? Bullseye! Starlight Blast! Are you catching on yet? Heal arrow! Bullseye! Tech Starlight Blast! Pretty good, huh? Yeah. 
You look pretty down. Are you catching on yet? I really wanted a challenge. You better pull your head in. Are you catching on yet? You're hopeless. Come on, let's go! Show me what you've got! Are you catching on yet? You're hopeless.
you get in our way. Are you catching on yet? Take that! How was that? Well, are you ready or what? Let's get started. <laughs> Are you catching on yet? Are you catching on yet? Take that!
a mess. Not bad. Going to let you get in our way. Are you catching on yet? Take that. Are you catching on yet? Boundaries of nothingness. Void air! Shadow assault! Quill strike! Chew on that! Heal arrow! The bullseye! Okay. Are you catching on yet? Exploded drift at the boundaries of nothingness. Void air! Shadow assault! Heal arrow! Bullseye! How is that there? Are you catching on yet? Okay. 
Are you catching on yet? Heal arrow! The bullseye! Okay. Are you catching on yet?
Don't be such a crybaby. Are you catching on yet? See the afterlife? Not a challenge at all. Don't be such a crybaby. Are you catching on yet? See the afterlife? We go around. Take that. See the afterlife? Frost, but 
the sun is on the mountain. A single touch! Snowball! Are you catching on yet? Are you catching on yet? Heal arrow! Heal arrow! Bullseye! Are you catching on yet? Did your stomach drop? Not bad at all. Maybe it's time for a new bow. Not bad. Right on! Say what you like, but don't you think it's a little far-fetched to claim that this world only exists inside your dream? I simply don't know. But I do know that I was born in the city of Warsaw, in the country of Poland, and that it was in the year 1810. Warsaw? Poland? I've never heard of places with names like that before. And you can even tell us what year. You've put an awful lot of effort into this. Wait, have you ever tried thinking about it like this? Maybe the truth is the exact opposite. This is the real world and that city called Warsaw is actually a dream. That would make a lot more sense. I agree. I've known Jazz since I was just a little girl, and we've been living our lives each day at a time just like everybody else in the world. That may be, but this world is unquestionably a dream. A dream I'm experiencing as I drift over the abyss of death. You really believe that? It's not like we're just acting out a role in a story that somebody wrote. We've been using our own free will and judgment to act for ourselves. Yes. However, even when in a dream, a person can decide his or her own actions. They can decide what happens next. In that respect, there is no way to differentiate between a dream and reality.
on, let's go! Show me what you- <laughs> Are you catching on yet? Take that! Did your stomach drop? Well, what did you expect? Are you catching on yet? Take that! Are you catching on yet? Go! 
lies at the end of this journey. The end of the journey? Hmm. Well, I really don't know, but I'm sure that the road does lead to somewhere. Salsa, I don't think that's what he means. I think that what Frederick is talking about is something of a more spiritual nature. I believe that this is going to be my final journey. But my final destination is shrouded in darkness. No matter how hard I look, I cannot see it at all. What are you talking about? The way you talk, you think you're about to die soon or something. I guess I'm the same way. I can't see where I'm headed in the end either. I don't think anyone can really see that, except maybe God. But the reason I can't see it is completely different from why you can't see it. The place where I'm going is surrounded by light. And because the light I'm heading for is so bright, I can't make out what's there either, the same as you. So you can't see because it's either too bright or too dark? then it's probably better to go with not being able to see because it's too bright. I agree with you. After all, no one can ever really know what the future will hold. The only thing you can do is live your life as best you can. So basically, what Salsa said was right. The road does lead to somewhere.
better pull your head in. Are you catching on yet? Are you catching on yet? Stomach drop. Heal arrow. Bulls 
Thanks. Are you catching on yet? What did you expect? Maybe it's time to upgrade. that camera, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's the most important thing in the whole world to me. It was my father's. This camera is the only thing he left to me. Yeah, every time I look at this camera, I remember my father. But it's more than just that. When he gave it to me, this is what he said. This is a very special camera. The pictures it takes are different depending on who uses it. Well, of course. Obviously, if someone who's good at photography uses it, they'll take better pictures. That's not what he meant. I don't really understand how it works, but it can show things in the pictures you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. You mean it can take pictures of ghosts? Uh-oh. Now that you mention it, Beat, I can see something floating behind you. Don't make fun of my father's camera! You big jerk! I hate you! Jeez, what's his problem? I was just joking around a little bit. Well, I don't want to insult B, but that camera doesn't look like it has any special powers. Well, some things you only understand by experience. There are a lot of things you can't understand until you look at them later objectively. Although most of what we consciously experience is visual, in reality, we are using so many other senses. Even so, people are often misled from the truth because they rely far too much on what they see with their eyes. Pictures can capture a single moment in time, and sometimes they can hold a truth beyond just the image itself. I can't be sure, but I think that's probably what Beat's father was trying to say to him. Man, you're really getting all philosophical, aren't you? Well, whatever. Anyway, pictures are visual reflections of reality, right? So, do you think music can do something like that, too? What? What I mean is, if there was music that performs reality, what would it be like? Music that performs reality?
pretty down. You're presented with a variety of sounds and expressions over time. It's an art where you enjoy an arrangement of time that changes from moment to moment. In contrast to that, a painting always stays the same, even after thousands of years. But then the world and the feelings drawn on that canvas can be shared by people in the past and in the future. If those two art forms were to be combined, I think that even God would be able to appreciate the resulting creation. An art form that would be appreciated by God? Yes. Imagine a music that could make us feel space and dimension. And pictures that would make us feel time and experience motion. Whatever kind of art it is, you would need to use more than one of your senses to understand it. It's more important to feel it with your heart. But let me ask you, does that idea really apply only to the arts? What? Maybe there's something else that's even closer to us. Something that can only be understood by feeling it with our hearts.
picking on weaklings really isn't my style. Are you catching on yet? Isn't my style. Snowball! Are you catching on yet? Don't go to drift at the boundaries of nothingness. Void it! Shadow assault! Did I make your eyes spin? Death! <laughs> Not a challenge at all. All right. Not bad. You look pretty down. Are you catching on yet?
Okay, you're all ready for this, right? Let's go! Come on, let's go! Show me what you've got! Take that! Are you catching on yet? By lightning and thunder will you be thrown. By wind will you be scattered. Heaven and earth. How is that there? Chew on that! Take that! Heal arrow! Doubles up! Okay! Are you catching on yet? Heal arrow! Thank you! Heal arrow! Thank you! Thanks! Are you catching on yet? Did your stomach drop? Frederick? Hey, where are you going?
When a man's consciousness is fading away, he will find, without fail, that he comes face to face with his own soul and must challenge it. It is the one moment when we are able to look directly upon our naked selves. I no longer have any doubt in my mind that, for me, that time has now come. Don't you all understand? You're nothing more than fictional characters that I've created in my mind! Frederick! What are you doing? When I'm defeated in this battle, a truth will be born in this world, and a fleeting dream will transform, slowly filling with color. And only when this ordeal is finally overcome will my soul at last be allowed to leave my physical body. Then let us test it! Whether I... No. Whether my spirit can become a lance capable of piercing through every one of you. We'll see if I'm truly such a weak human being. This entire world is my dream. I will not let you destroy it. Come on, let's go. Show me what you've got. <laughs> 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 Are you catching on yet? Yo! Applaudissements, Sonic! How you soulless creatures! Heal arrow! Bullseye! Did your stomach drop? Yo! Yo! Nimbo Stratos! You foolish creatures! Take that! Slow to drift at the boundaries of nothingness. Void Shadow Assault! Did I make your eye spin? Yo! Nimbo Stratos! You foolish creatures! Here! Are you catching on yet? Did your stomach drop? <laughs> there is no one else. I am the only one here. Applaudissements, Sonic! How could you soulless... <laughs> Applaudissements, Sonic! <laughs> you soulless creatures! <laughs> Orzel Bialy! Orzel Bialy! <laughs> How pitiful, you soulless creatures! Did your stomach drop? Nimbo Stratos! You foolish creature! Oh, 
Are you catching on yet? Did your stomach drop? Applaudissement, Sonic! How pitiful, you soulless creatures! Are you catching on yet? Applaudissements, Sonic! But the sun is on the mountain. A single touch. Start up! Did your stomach drop? Take that! Did your stomach drop? Ah! Applaudissement, Sonic! Ah! How you soulless creatures! Did your stomach drop? Ozel Biali! How pitiful, you soulless okay. creatures! I was not able to defeat you. After all, I'm glad. Polka? Stay back. Allegretto, I'm sorry that I didn't tell you about this before. I couldn't tell you. I didn't think you'd take me here if I'd explain why I wanted to come. You see? I remembered. I now know the path that I have to take. The sea. You will jump into the sea. finally see what your kindness was always hiding from me. Mom, you were the one who blurred all my memories, weren't you? No. The reason I couldn't remember was because I didn't want to worry you, Mom. I guess I was subconsciously hiding them away inside myself. 
behind the dark clouds that hung over my own feelings. It is your fate to go into the sea. Yes, my fate is to go into the sea. We lived our lives looking away from what was too difficult to face. We ignored everything hurtful and only saw what we chose to see. The world we created and nurtured in our hearts became increasingly real over time. Eventually it became so real that it clouded our eyes and hid the small truths that were all around us. Just like the shining of the stars is blotted out by the glare of the city lights. And to think it was part of my own memories. Mom, you watched over me all this time, making sure I didn't go down the wrong path. But after I left home, after I left you, I realized something. I realized that all this time you were guiding me down the wrong path. Because of your love for me as your daughter, I'm grateful, Mom. But still, you have to realize one day that water doesn't necessarily always flow downhill. It can sometimes become a high tide and surge up into the past, pushing a small stone upstream. This is the right path for me. And at the end of it, there lies a fate I cannot escape. The time has come for everything to be settled. It's my destiny, maybe even my purpose. No, it's nothing as passive as that. It's something I have to decide for myself, all on my own, right now! Polka, wait! It's okay. There's a place out there where I'm needed. A place that I have to illuminate with the shining light of the Astra that lies sleeping within my heart. Don't do it! I must do this. And it's for the person who means the most to me. My life is nothing compared to his. Doing this is easy if it's for him. done for her. Does this mean that dying was the only thing Polka could do? There wasn't any way we could save her? Why did Polka have to suffer? What did she ever do to deserve that? What is wrong with this world? Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! You! You 
come barging into our world without asking, and now you leave just because you feel like it! This is your dream, right? If it's a dream, then why don't you do something?! Please... You have to do something! A dream... Is this really... a dream? Thank you, everyone. I know it didn't last very long, but really, this was the best time I've ever had in my life. If I blow him a kiss, I wonder, will it reach him up there? I hope so. I really do. Can human beings who create waves of ugly desire ever become like the seawater that's stirred by the beauty of the moon? No one wants to touch someone like me, someone who can use magic. After all, they might get sick too. Well, of course the bread you're eating is much more important than the bread of a stranger. Huh? Uh, wait. How is it any different? All around us, the world is fading at an incredibly rapid rate. And yet, you say you aren't able to see it. Well, perhaps there's a reason for that. Perhaps you can't see it because you are fading away even faster than the world. If you're conscious of the fact that you're having a dream, and you can actually say that this is just a dream, then can you really be sure that it's a dream at all? Can a picture taken through a bent piece of glass called a lens really accurately reflect what happens at a single moment in time? It seems to me that your eyes would have to be pretty bent themselves for that to be possible. Something that people think is useful but can actually be harmful in the long run? Hmm. Well, the only thing I can think of right now is mineral powder. But I'm sure there are lots of other things out there. Maybe if you think about it for a while, you can come up with some things that I don't know about. I think that everyone knows deep down that some things that might seem useful to us right now could actually be hiding a danger to the future. And yet there are many people out there who simply refuse to accept that. Are people really so foolish that they aren't willing to sacrifice those little conveniences for the sake of the future? If people are too deeply involved in a problem, is it really not possible for them to realize what's wrong until it's too late to do anything about it? The standards for justice in this world are decided amidst the driving ambitions and turbulent emotions of a small handful of people who just happen to possess the greatest influence. Well, you certainly have been born into a difficult era. A lifetime to build, a moment to destroy. Will human beings ever become masters of creation, or are we only destined for destruction? I was acting out a part up until the moment I died. Do you plan to spend your whole life pretending to be someone you're not? Are you sure you know the difference between things that can be forgotten right away 
like letters written in the sand, and really important things that must never be forgotten, like words carved into stone. It's an important distinction to make. Without realizing it, people tend to act in ways that suit their own best interests, and before they know it, they've turned all their efforts to seeing just how powerful or successful they can become. It can't always have been like that. Things must have been different in the beginning. Try to remember the feelings you had when you first started out. Can't we make better use of the energy we spend maintaining our feelings of mistrust? There must be a way. If we could all do that somehow, I think it would make it much easier to live a life filled with light. When I realized that I had no hope of beating Claves, I ran away. What about you? Are you like me? Do you run away from situations where you know you can't win, too? The view of Retardando is so beautiful at night. But which part of that view is the most beautiful thing about it? The flickering of the city lights below? Or the twinkling of the stars in the night sky above? As the leader of Baroque, I am responsible for making the people of my country suffer under the fear of impending war. The citizens of Baroque are innocent people, whose only crime is living in the kingdom I rule. And there are others in this world who suffer similar misfortune. Remember to be very grateful if you are lucky enough to happen to live in a country at peace. I believe that the future holds infinite hope for all of us. So no matter what the odds, however slim the chance, I always try to hold on to that hope. I would never want to give up on something without at least trying. What about you? What would you have done in my place? Would you still draw a fortune if you already knew what it was going to say? Suppose you could not be sure whether or not there was any ground behind you. Knowing that, would you still have the courage to take a step backward? At certain times in life, does it not take much more courage to take a step back than to take a step forward? Would you be courageous enough to do it? If you live with your eyes closed to whatever is difficult to face, does that mean those things don't exist? People with brightly glowing astras always have to suffer in the end. Is the place where you are a miserable world like that? Don't you want to change it? You can't just sit back and accept a destiny of death. You have to fight back, resist. You have to try as hard as you can. After all, that's what life's all about, isn't it? You can give up when it's really, truly, absolutely the very end. Until then, you gotta try and do whatever you can. I guarantee that you still have time. That's right. You still have time. Absolutely. Now is when it really begins. Just take a moment to study yourself. I know what it feels like to have a future filled with doubt. To feel overwhelmed. To think it's all over. To want to give up on everything. But there's no use just thinking about it. You can't hesitate. You need to act upon it. 
since in the end, all you can do is try as hard as you can. You don't have to rush. There's still time. You have infinite potential after all. I promise you, even now, you can still do it. All you have to do is the very best you can. I guarantee you still have time. Death is a reality that is far too real. I've walked this dreamlike journey within a dream, so that once and for all, I could accept that. And now, at this moment, all things shall reach their finale! Mr. Chopin's time of death, two o'clock in the morning. Mommy, why are there waves in the sea? Well, darling, there are waves because of the moon. Because of the moon? That's right. The moon charms the water in the ocean with its beauty. And because the moon is so beautiful, the seawater just can't sit still. Is that true? Really? Really? Don't you feel your heart start fluttering inside of you when you look at the moon? I do! What about the puddle? Will it make waves when the moon comes out too? No, dear. There's not enough water. You need lots and lots of water, like the ocean, before it can make any real waves. Oh, I see. But that's weird. Why can't a little bit of water make waves too? I won't let you die, Polka. After all, you've only been alive for 14 years. A 14-year-old girl must live her life. The amount of water is the most important part of creating waves. 
That can be said about people as well. There are many things in this world that can charm people's hearts, just like the moon charms the sea. Things like wealth, vanity, status, image, and power. When the sun is out, they hide in their buds and then open their blossoms only when it is truly important. Drawing in even the faintest amount of light, they decisively embody it, and in doing so, reflect something that people can never see. They wait for the moment when the world is trapped in darkness, and then blossom with glowing light. On the grassy plain, they paint a picture of the star-filled night sky that was blotted out by the city lights. I guess... Isn't it pitch black around you? Isn't the world covered in darkness? But if something like that now, ever Olga, were to happen come. during your life, it's two o'clock in the morning. Might be to jump into that sea. The time for you to blossom has come. Because when you do, those big waves will calm down. Do you remember? It may be you said it was up to me whether I wanted to call them heaven's mirror you'll bring joy to or the death lights. Who means the most to you. Really? I'm still allowed to choose, am I not? Okay. Well, then I shall make my definitive choice. Right yes. now. Then it's insulting to compare that some flower that so resembles you. The moon to the ugly that flower that boldly design. challenges the darkness. I choose to call it Heaven's Mirror. I see. Then you must have met the person who is the perfect match for your Astra. Well, he's the person that you choose to believe in, so I'm sure he must be wonderful. I did so want to see you on your wedding day. But now, I suppose the only thing I can do for you is to tell you this. Come back someday and do your best. Okay, Mommy. I'll see you later then. Have I been able to become more like the seawater that is stirred by the beauty of the moon? Thank you, Polka dear. Please, be happy.
it's Polka. She's... she's glowing.
The Shape of Life One day, the caterpillar asked the snail, Mr. Snail, you know many things. Could you tell me what kind of shape is the shape of life? The snail nodded and answered, Well, Mr. Caterpillar, I think that maybe life is red, like a ripe tomato. The caterpillar laughed happily and said, No, Mr. Snail, I didn't ask about the color of life. I asked you about the shape. The snail nodded and pondered. And then he answered, Well, Mr. Caterpillar, I think that maybe it has a sweet scent, like a pot of honey. The caterpillar let out a disappointed sigh and said, No, Mr. Snail, I didn't ask about the scent of life. I asked you about the shape. The snail nodded and pondered and thought some more. And then he answered, Well, Mr. Caterpillar, I think that maybe it murmurs like a babbling brook. The caterpillar finally broke down in sorrowful tears, shook his head and said, No, Mr. Snail. I didn't ask about the sound of life. I asked you about the shape. The snail nodded and pondered, and at long last he finally answered, Well, Mr. Caterpillar, I think that maybe it has a sharp, sweet flavor, like a juicy cherry. Losing his patience, the caterpillar grew very angry and said, If you don't want to answer me, then fine. I'm not going to ask you any more, Mr. Snail. Goodbye. And with that, the caterpillar turned around and went home. When he was gone, the snail nodded and said, Oh, Mr. Caterpillar, you already knew the answer. Happiness, disappointment, sorrow, anger. These are the sights, smells, sounds, and tastes. Life can take on many different shapes.